Hello, hello, what's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Tuesday to you all. Good to see ya, good to see ya, good to see ya. What is up, Zelda Zach? Have an amazing weekend at KubeCon. Looks like a really, really cool event. Spotlight, how are you? Good to see ya. Lof Cameron, Tuka Buddy, Palenko, Arocalypse, Dogamith. How is everyone doing today? So today, we are going to do something we haven't done in a minute, which is, uh... <laughs> We're going to we're gonna play some explore. We're gonna try some explore. We'll see. We might play against Mono Green five times in a row and then give up and switch back to something else. But this deck looks really sweet. And I really want to try it. So I think we're gonna do a little exploring today and see what explore is about. Hey, what's up, Jilly? How are you? Bob Jones, Jacobs, and Spotlight. How is everyone doing today? Pulled a Ristic Study in Chinatown from a booster ten minutes ago. That's like oh, is it the anime version? Or the normal version. I'm pretty sure the anime confetti foil Ristic study is the most expensive card. It's like 800 bucks or something like absolutely absurd. We're gonna try some exploring. We're gonna do a little, a little pioneering, a little exploring. Because I was looking through deck lists and I saw a deck list with four grabby giants and I knew as soon as I saw it, how can we not play a grabby giant deck? Like grabby giant might actually be good in the deck. This is not only is it a grabby giant deck, this is grabby giant. Beseech the Mirror Demonic Pack Wish Combo. It is all, I know it's Rakdos. If you just look at the deck, you're like, oh, it's a Rakdos deck. Sure, Rakdos is everywhere. This is a very different, much grabbier uh, version of Rakdos than I've ever seen before. So I'm excited to give this a shot. Actually, I've been playing a lot of Explore lately. Has some spicy brews outside of Mono Green. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how it goes. I haven't played much Explore lately. I've been playing much more, uh, much more historic. Mono green kind of pushed me away from Explorer, but I, I want to see what it's like. Plus, this deck list looks really sweet. So that's our main plan. We're going to start with Grabby Giant Rakdos Beseech the Mirror Combo. And doing well, geez, guy. How are you? Good to see you. Mick Mac Paddywhack. Welcome to the stream. Good to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So that's the plan for today, but we got to do some reminders, and we have stuff to talk about. So the big news. Actually, let's do let's do reminders first. Replay YouTube. Let's be vital. The old streams, including this one to the future. Normal YouTube. Yesterday, we did some uh, Goblin Bombardment with actual with actual goblins and the deck is actually really sweet and budget friendly for budget magic so check that out tomorrow we have a i'm not going to tell you what the against odds is but it's a it's a good one you're going to like uh, tomorrow's against the odds a reminder that our sponsor today is card kingdom if you need some magical cards you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtd goldfish if you get a free goldfish shaker just let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up so anyway the big news the big news of the week and i need to know people's opinions on this so yesterday Wizards announced, well, no changes B and R. We'll complain about that as we go along. Watsy, please, just like Ban Fury or like Nick those. Man, do something. It was so funny. So <laughs> Watsy, they, they did the no changes B and R. Their announcement was essentially an ad for play boosters, which we're gonna talk about in just a minute. There was doing a Watsy live stream today and they asked about a uh, why there was no write-up and Blake said well I talked to some people and like play design and stuff and they said uh nothing had changed nothing had changed in the formats so they didn't think you know it was really necessary to do a write-up but we'll do write-ups in the future hopefully I think that nothing changing is the issue I feel like that's the disconnect like I feel like players want things to change in modern like the fact that uh, Rakdos Scam is still 20% of the meta and it's been the same for three months. Or Nykthos is still the best deck in Pioneer and it's been that way for months and months. Like, I think that's the problem. Like, what Wizards see is, oh, nothing has changed, so that's good and we don't even need to, like, do an announcement or explain our thinking about the ban list. Is what players see and are like, oh, like, I'm really sick about, uh, you know, of getting scammed every game or playing against Nykthos every game. So I think maybe that's, like, part of the disconnect between, like, how WotC views the format and how we view the format. However... Here's the, here's the big news, and I gotta know what you think. So yesterday, Wizards announced they're getting rid of boosters. No more traditional draft boosters. They used to just be boosters until a few, a few years ago. Like, they were just booster packs. That was the only booster pack there was. So they're getting rid of draft boosters, or the traditional booster. They're getting rid of set boosters, which were one of the new additions to the booster family. And they are making play boosters. In play boosters, you can see this little graphic here. They're essentially set boosters almost but designed more for drafting and this will be the only booster option so uh those should be collector boosters but the only non-collector booster option so these will be what you use for limited i'm very interested what do you think about limited that's the first question because this is going to really change how really change how uh how people draft like these will be your draft packs you will be drafting set boosters now uh or something very similar to set boosters uh curious if it's gonna bad for limited i personally am excited for draft hey i love you too ever good to see you good to see you um 
I'm excited for it for draft. I was actually surprised. That was like my number one takeaway when I heard about this was that sounds really fun for draft because I like I like cube drafts. I like high power draft formats. I like having like more rares in the pool. So my initial take is like a more casual drafter is that sounds really sweet. I'm going to be more excited to draft because of this change. A lot of people who really draft though seem upset about it. I was kind of surprised to see a lot of like hardcore drafters, they want less rares in their packs and seeing more rares as a possibility was actually like a negative for them. So I was kind of surprised by that. I figured more rares is better, but I guess not for everyone. The other change, which is uh, <clears throat> actually makes sense that people would be critical about, and I guess I'm critical about too, the downside of this is the price is going up a little bit. So play boosters are going to be set booster prices. So there's no draft booster price. There's no super cheap box. The best I can figure, the cheapest booster box of Magic is going to be probably 150 bucks. I think is a fair a fair estimate. There's not going to be $100 booster boxes anymore. That's not a not an option. So it's either going to be 150-ish dollar play boosters or whatever collector boosters are for the set. That's the drawback. Is this just, I've seen some people like, this is just a price increase that Watsy's trying to hide, which I think even for me is maybe a, a little bit too cynical. It is a price increase, but I don't think that's like, it's definitely not the only reason for this change. And I would say, I don't even think it's like the primary reason. I don't think all this is just to like dress up a price increase. 150 is an insane markup. So the idea is they're going to be the same price as set boosters. The difference is set booster boxes, usually like $120, but there's only 30 packs. These are going to be 36 packs. So those extra six packs at set booster prices push it up 145, 150, 155, like somewhere in that range, depending on who you talk to. They could have just increased the price without changing the packs. That's true. Or they could have made play boosters and put them at draft booster prices. Of course, that's, <laughs> you know, they're not going to do that. Like, that would be the, that would be the uh, no one can complain option. Like, if they had made this change and we're like, hey, guess what? We're going to make play boosters. They're kind of like set boosters, but they're made for drafting. And they're going to be sold at draft booster prices. Everyone would, like, how do you even complain about that? So they went with the more expensive of the two options. I think it'll make opening packs better. I do think, here's the biggest upside. There's two massive, massive upsides here. One is, this is all good for Arena. On Arena, I don't know how this can possibly be bad, because they've already said they're not gonna raise prices on Arena. So if you draft on Arena, now you're gonna have, what, 40% more rares in your draft pod, which means if you're drafting to build a collection, you're gonna complete your collection a lot faster. So I think Arena, this is a big, 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 huge upside because they're not increasing prices, they're keeping it the same. So that's one really big upside. The other big upside is, Magic is just too confusing. <laughs> Do we really need... Do we really need to have like so many different products? Do we need play boosters and set boosters and collector boosters and draft boosters and commander precons and jumpstart and set specific jumpstart? And like, there's so much. So I like that this just simplifies things. Like having three different booster products, probably a little bit too much for like people to keep track of. So I like that it's going to simplify things. In a perfect world, there's one draft product or one booster product. I don't know how we ever get there. But a lot of other games, they only have one booster product, right? Like there's only one booster box of the set. There's not three different options that are all slightly different. And it just makes it a lot more understandable. So I like how this is simplifying things. Do you think Star Wars uh, UE being a limited centric game and having cheaper boosters made Watsy want to go above them before they release in Q1 2024? What is Star Wars UE? <laughs> this is the first. Is there another? Is there another new competitor? Is this Lorcana, but for Star Wars? Wizards of the Coast may, uh, themselves are the one that made up the three booster situation. Come up with the first place, so they aren't at fault for making the initial setup confusing in the first. But oh yes, no Wizards, 100% deserves the blame for making things confusing. They are the ones that are adding all the products and making it confusing. But I do like that this does simplify things. So sure, it's Wizards fixing one of their own mistakes in some sense, but I still think it's a positive. Like if you're a new player, you don't know what a set booster versus draft booster versus collector booster is. I wonder if Lotsy has already gone so far down the rabbit hole that saturating products doesn't even matter anymore. Yeah, I guess we'll, I guess we'll, I mean, we also got like another secret layer announcement in the last day and some new Probo. So it's not like, it's not like things are <laughs> slowing down. Apparently there's this new, new secret layer that you can get to your LGSs, apparently. These like Hydra secret layers. So at least, at least it's going to local game stores. That's like a good thing. 
Is that a token? Is that just a Hydra token? <laughs> I am looked all the way to the Hydra token. That is kind of a cool Hydra token. Still looks a lot like a custom card, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, uh, but anyway, so what do you think? Does set boosters or play boosters, like, does a change matter to you? Is it good or bad for you personally? I see it as mostly upside with a bit of downside mixed in. Other people see it as mostly downside with a little upside mixed in. I, I definitely think the benefits outweigh the drawbacks, I would say. It's kind of wild. Uh, this will kind of host people more frequently in draft because a person that ends up with a pod of randomly low amount of rares will have a really difficult time beating the decks that have a higher number of rares. So, okay, actually, I think in draft it's fine. Because in draft, so let's say where this really, what I think it wrecks is sealed, like pre-release. I think it really wrecks pre-release. It makes pre-release much less fair. So draft, let's say you open a four rare pack, the maximum, you don't really get that much of a benefit because you have to pass three of them. You can only take one card out of the pack and you're going to have to pass it. So, like, I think that's fine. I don't think draft gets hurt by this at all, really. Sealed, on the other hand, it will theoretically be possible. And in practice, this is not likely to happen. But it is theoretically possible that you go to your pre-release for uh, Murders of Karlov Man uh, Manor. You open six rares, maybe a bunch of uh, rare lands that aren't very helpful for you. You open six rares, you have an opponent that opened 24 rares. That's a thing that could happen. And like, how do you, how is that fair? How can you possibly, <laughs> how can you possibly win that match where you have one fourth amount of rares as your opponent? So that's, I think, that is a concern. I think sealed this is like a big, big negative. Boom gravy! With the gift sub to Hosty, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyway, we can talk about this as we go along. What is the deck we're playing today? So this is, we calculated there'd be one 24 rare player per 20,000 players. Uh, so that's, how, but okay, how about this sag? What about, uh, you? so you've done the math apparently. So that's not going to happen very often. That means there's going to be like, a couple of people in the whole world on pre-release weekend or something, a handful that actually get the, the 24 rare pool. What about like 12 rares? Like even you get six rares, your opponent has double the amount. That seems like that'll happen much more frequently. Like that's probably like realistic and it's still a pretty big disadvantage, right? Like I know Watsy, like someone's mentioned this to Watsy and Watsy was like, and eh, seal's always unbalanced. You get a bad pool, your opponent gets a good pool. Like that's just how the game works. But this does make it more extreme. Like it, it does, it does make it more. All right, see, yeah, how about twelve rares or something like that? Like I, I'm curious, I'm curious what it is for. Like not the most extreme, but something that's actually kind of realistic. Envon and Micmac Paddywhack, welcome to the fishbowl. First time sub. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoop for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so what is our first deck for today? This is Grabby Giant Beseech the Mirror Demonic packed dot deck so what is this deck trying to do well our main game plan is to win with demonic pack demonic pack i love this card we've played it before this is the one where you get three good options and then the lose the game option you get to deal some damage and gain some life make your opponent discard some cards you draw some cards well the idea of this deck is twofold first we can play demonic pack use the good mode and then use harmless offering either naturally or by wishing for a harmless offering from our sideboard with a literal wish to give it to our opponent make them lose the game the other other trick here is beseech the mirror it can sacrifice enchantment so we can play demonic pack use the good modes if we're worried about dying we can beseech the mirror to get another demonic pact and start the process over we also have grappy giant to make treasures to beseech off of charming scoundrel makes treasures to beseech off of we even have artifact land that we can beseech off of so that's kind of the main goal like shenanigans with demonic pack trying to figure out between beseech the mirror and wishes and harmless offerings how to kill our opponent with it the other cool part of this deck is the wish plan we have three wishes in the deck and that means we have access to our entire sideboard we can get artifact lands we can get shielders we can get removals we can get hate cards we can get graveyard hate we can get dresses so we can use the wishes to snag whatever we're missing so that's kind of the plan kind of like piece things together with grabby giant and demonic pact figure out how to get the win with beseech the beer so let's see let's see if it actually works Important question, considering your rare count is going up per pack, is Watsy going to make more rares more synergistic, less powerful to compensate? I have not heard the actual answer to that question. I know, I know they have said that, I know they have said 
that uh, they are designing every single aspect of these play boosters with limited in mind. So I assume, hey, what's up, Frogger? How are you? It's a, it's a grabby day. Um, so I assume the answer to that is yes. The other thing that people were questioning, and what do you think about this? So the other change to this is to the list. And I think the list changes are mostly good. Uh, so one of the one of the criticisms of the list, and I've experienced this myself. So if you know what the list is, it's like the reprints that show up in set boosters or now play boosters. The problem with the list is it's very unlikely to actually get a list card. It's like 10% of the time, 8% of the time, like some small percent. And then most of the time, even if you get a list card, it is like, I don't even know how you pick these cards. It's like literally the look at me, I'm the DCI throwing a random dart. It's like some random common that you've never heard of. Like why, why are you even reprinting this? Why, why is this supposed to be an exciting thing for me to open? So wizard said, we've heard your feedback on that. We're gonna pare down the list to only 40 cards and try to make them more exciting cards. So you're not gonna get lucky and open a list card and have it be a card that you just absolutely do not want. So I think that change is good. Related though, the list cards are going to be limited legal for the first time. That's that's something that's something we haven't seen. A lot of people have uh, have actually actually been a little uh, a little upset about that. That's been a complaint I've heard from quite a few people. Um, hmm. well, I mean, we're just going we're going for the demon. We have the harmless offering in hand. We're gonna make a treasure. We're gonna get in with a charming scoundrel. We can play demonic pack next turn and hope for the best. Don't thought seize us, because we need this harmless offering. We could play Demonic Pact and lose to it. That is a possibility. <laughs> You're telling me that you don't like opening a sick list of cards and the one silly unbalanced common from Future Sight that had Convoke and Buyback that would make a sap for I can't even remember the name of that card. I just remember opening it like, why are you here? Yeah, that is kind of the issue. <laughs> Kind of the issue with uh, with the list, but I think they're fixing that issue at least. All right, there's a Cauldron Familiar, sure. Uh, we are playing... We are playing Explorer today, so no rebalancing. All our cards are paper cards uh, today. Yeah, so the list, that's, that's another place where we're going to see the... Designed for limited aspects. So the list is going to be designed with play boosters and limited in mind. So it's gonna change each set. It's gonna be thematic with the set or with a limited format. I think it'll be actually kind of exciting. I'm excited. Oh. Seriously? Seriously. Seriously, opponent. Seriously? All right, well, uh, Rite of Oblivion. That's a card that's legal to play. Oh, what is our what is our luck to run into a deck that actually can just hard remove can just hard remove demonic pack? Sprout Storm is actually a good card. Fable of the Mirror Brega. Yeah, we're we're probably in trouble here because our opponent can just flash back the right of Oblivion. So I'm actually not sure what we do about this. Maybe we need like a wish for graveyard hate or something. We draw land. <clears throat> is there anything we can do about this? Uh, we're playing Explorer right now, which is essentially Pioneer, but Arena doesn't have quite all the cards yet. Huh. I mean, I guess we can just play Grabby Giant. But then they get to, like, Kill this, make a treasure. All right, we'll run out the grabby giant. I don't like where we're at though. I think we're in a in a rough spot. Opponent gets back the cauldron familiar. Sacks the cauldron familiar. Gets back the cauldron familiar. Down to 50, does some looting. Did you draw removal? It would be nice if we could somehow go blank the cauldron familiar. It's just so hard. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Opponent draws four pure gas cards. Passes. <laughs> <sighs> okay, look at this deck chat. Is there any, there's gotta be a way. There's gotta be something. 
Is there like a hate card we can get out of our sideboard to stop this from going poorly? There's got to be. So we can beseech for a wish. We can wish for nothing of note. None of this stuff matters. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, okay. Beseech. Bargain. Sack the treasure. I mean, I think we actually are just going to go blank. That's probably the best we can do here. Because our opponent drew four cards, I'm not sure this actually, like, saves us, saves us. But what about Rankle's prank? No, that's probably worse. Actually, hmm. Yeah, it's just got to be go. It's just got to be go blank, I think. I'll get the go blank. Go blank, you. So empty your hand. Get rid of the right of oblivion. Play the tap land. Pass the turn. Opponent. Fable, fable. And Mayhem Devil. Hmm. Yeah, this is bad. We can't kill the Mayhem Devil, so I think we're going to die. Hey, what's up, Mindset? They're all hell. Were you? Good to see you. Good to see ya. Just make set boosters. Just the same as draft boosters and staple boosters. Cards full of actual playable cards for constructed formats plus anything people want to collect. I mean, hmm. <clears throat> isn't that kind of collector boosters? Yeah, the problem with the Demonic Pact is our opponent just has answers for it, which makes it tough. I think we're actually just dead here, honestly. With uh, them hitting the four cards, like four action cards off Showdown of the Skulls, not good. But the problem is our opponent's actually a deck that can just easily remove enchantments. So all of this does... <laughs> our whole game plan falls apart if your opponent's a Rave of Oblivion deck. I mean, the problem is our, like, the thing is our Demonic Pack does nothing because of Rave of Oblivion. That's the, that's the problem. We played the first one, they Rite of Oblivion did it, they had it with Flashback, and now they have another one in Exile, so, um, there's just no, we know it can't possibly work because we see the removal spell in their hand. Is Demonic Pack just bad now with bargain cards? I mean, you can't bargain your opponent's cards. Bargain cards make Demonic Pack better, because we're able to bargain away Demonic Pact if we need to. Charming Scoundrel and dead. Um, so bargain cards, I think, actually do the opposite. I think the bargain cards actually improve our chances. Do we even sideboard it all, or do we just leave everything for the wish? What would we bring in? Like, Tormod's Crypt is probably better to wish for. All this stuff is probably better to wish for. Honestly, I guess we could bring in like a little removal. Rankle's prank seems ambitious. <laughs> we move that to the sideboard. Maybe we bring in just like extinction event. Extinction event might be good. Let's try it like that. Can you elaborate on what you found in Google with the MTG? So there, okay, so there's this thing. There's this thing. Does no one else remember the MTG deep throw thing? Does no one does no one else remember that? That was like a real thing. So there was this thing. <laughs> this was a few years ago. This Twitter account out of nowhere appeared called MTG Deep Throat. And it started like putting all these very, very extreme accusations against the MTG finance community that vendors had like master set lists ahead of time. And they were manipulating the market. And they were getting these set lists from must be insiders at Watsi. And then they were like selling the cards that were going to be reprinted. And it was like this really big scandal. Wizards lawyers got involved and started like talking to the people who were accused of it. The end result never actually, actually never came out publicly. 
Uh, it may have been someone who just had like an ax to grind against <laughs> MTG Finance that made this stuff up, but it was like a really big thing for a little while where there was like, actually, boy, this hand is jank. Uh, where it was actually a big thing that Watsi took seriously, but I was trying to, I was trying to remember the details of it. Yes. I was trying to remember the details of it. I made, I made the mistake of, <laughs> of Googling MTG Deep Throat. Not, not a good, not a good idea. Major, major instant regrets. <laughs> instant regret but yes that uh that was my story of google this morning also gotta say i feel targeted by your proxy video you put out a week ago i make my proxies myself but i know better than to talk about printer quality and dot make services literally no one wants to hear that uh hopefully everyone took that video with a with a sense of humor that was the that was the main that was the main idea oh my god grabby giant I mean, we're already down to six. Fable the Mirror Breaker. Do we draw land? We do, but it's tapped. Hmm. <clears throat> Ponus, early GG. Mute, Jamie Pelko. <laughs> Muted you have been. Uh, how are you? How are you, Stone Raid? Good to see you, good to see ya. I made something for Patreon. I think you'd have much fun with it. Ooh, let me let me see, Doug. Pona gets in, makes treasure. I mean, I think this game is just pretty over. There's a Mayhem Devil. We need to, like, maybe the Storm's Wrath could do something. So, like, we can pass. Oh, they're making so many treasures. But we can, like, make a treasure with Grabby Giant into Storm's Wrath. We'll see what our opponent draws. Hopefully... Hopefully nothing. If they have a handful of lands, there's like some small amount of hope. Pona gets in, it says down to 11. And thought sees. <laughs> Are they gonna haste their reflection to copy Mayhem Devil and sack treasures? They're like looking at their own stuff. What is our what is our opponent doing? Probably frantically emoting, but we can't tell because they're muted now for their early GG insult. <laughs> All right, boom. Grabby giant, make that treasure. We'd still like to just draw land. Okay, we do draw land, so we get to play this. Storm's Wrath, sweep the board. Well, we'll see. I mean, our one lander is kind of working out. We have hit our land drops. Wow, opponent's gonna sack their treasure just to deal damage? Okay. Sure. Well, we dropped to nine and we sweep the board. We pass the turn. Opponent adapts. Land. And. So can Zan. Down to seven. Blood Tithe Havista. Thought sees not very helpful. Uh, kind of dying. Oh, all right. Well, Beseech, bargain it. Is Beseech a flop? Remember how remember how hype this card was? I have not seen Beseech do that much. Uh, we probably just extinction event. Yeah, this has got to be best. Extinction event. Sweep the board. Evens. All right. I mean, opponent's down to one card in hand. We have successfully stabilized. They get the Jigatha. Sure. I mean, we got a Grabby Giant. We have a threat. We have a threat that's coming. <laughs> Another thoughts. You know what? We don't have any fear. Thought sees you. We don't need life points. Uh, wow, lots of ways to steal creatures. Uh, take Jagatha. Thoughtseize, down to three, unfortunately. Take Furnace Reigns. Charming Scoundrel. Make a treasure. No attacks, because they have... Okay, so if they play a cheap creature, they can haste it in. So we need to leave this back. So they can't kill us with haste. All right, they're going to take... 
No, if they drew Deadly Dispute, I swear. No. Okay, they just hit us and pass. Demonic Pack. Pass the turn. Hold, 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 Demonic Pack. Hold. Pound it. Passes. Okay, okay. Uh, target opponent. We gotta go greed. Target opponent discards two cards. Empty that hand. Empty that hand. Grabby Giant. Run it out. Pass the turn. About it. Thought cease is a wish. Oh, this is so close. This is so close. We will draw two cards. Okay, there's some lands. There's some lands. That's good. That's good. We play the land. We can't give our... Okay, we just need to not die this turn. Not die, not get Thought Seize. No death, no Thought Seize. No death, no Thought Seize. No death, no Thought Seize. Pwn it. Passes. Okay, gain four. We're doing it. We're actually doing it. We're actually doing it. We are actually doing it. Uh, we will wish. Yes, please. Wish. Harmless offering. <laughs> and you said I shouldn't have kept the one lander. One land, one keep. One land, one keep. It paid off. <laughs> it paid off. About it. The choice is yours. GG. 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 <laughs> Our opponent GG'd us when we kept the one lander too. My game volume is really low. Like my voice or the arena sounds? Oh, I think they're muted altogether. There we go. They should they should be working now. That was actually a really sweet win. If you go back in time and show your past self one Magic the Gathering card, what would it be? Hmm. Is this like, so what's, what would my goal of showing me this card be? Is this the like, I want to blow blow my, my younger self's mind? Like, I would not believe it was a card? Or is this just like, oh, this card is going to exist. You're going to be super happy about it. The deck does have some really cool synergies. Why are we wishing the Harmless Offering instead of just playing more Harmless Offerings? Because we can also wish for End the Festivities. <laughs> or maybe we need a, a Tormod script or a treasure map. Wish could be wish could be a Harmless Offering or it could even be a boat. I think, so if I was going to, what would the Blow My Mind card be? If I want to show New Magic Player Seth a card that I'd just be like, no, there's no way that exists. What would the best example... Maybe, like... So, it'd probably be a Planeswalker. I remember when Planeswalkers became a thing that kind of blew my mind. So, maybe it would probably be, like, Teferi, Teferi Hero of Dominaria, Teferi Time Raveler. Maybe something like that. Oh, the one, the one Ring. The one... I wonder, like... I wonder if early Magic player Seth would be would be impressed by the one ring i wonder if i get it like does that a card that jumps off the page is like being super powerful oko although oko doesn't really jump off the page either we saw that during spoiler season it's not like oko it's not like oko was just immediately thought of to be like this broken card by most people most people are kind of like eh yeah it's okay like what's a food <laughs> I think there were a few people that like immediately got it, but most people didn't. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's just play this on black. Pass the turn. What card would you show your younger self if you were trying to uh <laughs> trying to blow your your mind? Oh, Ragavan. Yeah, Ragavan's a good one. Ragavan's a very good one. Found it. Deadly dispute. Gonna sack it. Gonna draw a couple cards. Sure, sure, sure. Passes. Well, uh, path. Actually, let's just yeah, uh, yeah. Let's pathway in red. Fable of the Mia Breaker. Two can play at this game. Oh, solitude being modern legal. What do you think of the no changes being higher? Watsy. Why does Watsy not want to ever ban anything? <laughs> Watsy, Watsy, Watsy. Please, for the love of God. You have the option to ban things. That is okay. <laughs> it is allowed. <laughs> hey, Seth. Sadly, my PC had an accident, and now I'm stuck with a second-hand one. Cannot see the stream even on 160 due to major issues, but wanted to say hello anyway. Oh, die on the phone. Oh, well, hopefully hopefully you get your PC uh, situation fixed. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. That sounds like quite the hassle. 
All right, opponent has wrecked our board quite expertly here. Stole our goblin, made a bunch of treasures, takes our demonic pact. Well, we will loot away harmless offering, loot away a swamp. Draw some cards. <laughs> Go blank. Go blank. Um, do we go blank now or do we wait? Maybe we just fable again. Yeah, let's just fable. We'll go blank next turn. Let's get on another fable in the mirror breaker. Make another goblin. Pass the turn. I heard they didn't ban anything because they're in the middle of RTQ, RPTQ season. Really? About it. <laughs> We're not even hardly played creatures. Why are these claim the firstborn's working? <laughs> they sh uh, No. You don't have another deadly dispute, too. No, no, no. You already got through two. Right of Oblivion. Sex our goblin kill kills our fable. Oh, I'm going to go blank you so hard, opponent. <laughs> oh, get that Jengatha. Get that Jengatha. Get that Jengatha. Get that Jengatha. Oh, Oh, we're about to end him. We're about to end him. <laughs> Woo! Out of here hand. <laughs> God. Um, boy, go blank can be brutal. Pound it. Sacks of blood. Discards a land. Feeling a little desperate. Looking for some action. She finds a showdown of the Scald, which is very much action. Cat. Harvester. Right of a... Wow. Our opponent is really good at hitting 100% action with their deadly disputes. Uh, Charming Scoundrel. Make a wicked roll on the Charming Scoundrel. Charming Scoundrel. Make a treasure. Reflections of Kiki Jiki. Copy Charming Scoundrel. Wicked Roll on the Charming Scoundrel. Hit you with all we got. Well, here comes the pressure. Opponent's going to have a big turn, but they're down to seven, and we got a bunch of Wicked Rolls. These treasures are huge for our opponent. These are going to give them the mana to play all four cards they hit with Showdown of the Skull's opponent, Cauldron Familiar. Gains a life. Opponent. Blood Tithe Harvester. Loses a life. Counter on the Cauldron Familiar. Lots of pain lands over there. About it. Right of Oblivion, down to five temporarily. And... Deadly Dispute. Sex the Treasure plays a land. Wow, these showdowns of the Skulls have been so huge for our opponent. Wow, into a Thought Seize. Into a Thought Seize. Oh, wait. Wait. Wait, what's in our sideboard? What's in our sideboard? Oh, does this wish save us? How do I see my sideboard? I know there's a way. Why do I never remember this? Chat, chat, what's the, how do I see what's in the sideboard? There we go. There's a fatal push. There is a fatal push. So if we get fatal push, if we get fatal push, we win. If we get fatal push, we win. Well, our pact has been thought seized, but this fatal push, I think does it because of the wicked roll. So we get to kill the Cauldron Familiar. Go attacking. The Wicked rolls the one that deals the damage when it goes to the graveyard. If they block, they dead. If they don't block, they're dead. And 
We found a way. We found a way. Good game opponent. Good game opponent. <laughs> yes. Wow, that was actually sweet. That was actually super sweet. <laughs> I kind of want to build a deck now, Rucker, that, like, is only, like, Karn and Wish and... Oh, no, what's the black one that's, like... Uh, four mana tutor from your deck or your sideboard but I kind of want to build a deck that can't win <laughs> that can't win with the main deck but only can win with the sideboard I think that'd be kind of funny oh did I see that I, I pulled it up Doug but I didn't actually I didn't look at it Ooh, Rasputin he does have a very impressive beard that is a that is a pretty epic uh pretty epic beard wow Rasputin's 150 bucks now whoo Ooh, we got some blink value. Little, uh, some combo potential. Palancron, Dead Eye Navigator, Peregrine Drake. I do love playing decks like, I do. <laughs> this, this is a very, very much like old school Seth Commander style. Just like blink in value and like, we'll figure out a way to win somehow. Like, we're just going to draw all the cards, blink all the things, and then... <laughs> And then we'll figure out the res later. Yeah, that that looks like a kind of deck I like, Doug. That's uh, that's kind of. Although I will say I have moved more away from that play style just because the games take so long. Mastermind's acquisition. Yes, that was the one I was thinking of. Yeah, it does look really sweet, Doug. Epic Beard Battles of the Multiverse. <laughs> Saffron Olive versus Pleasant Kenobi begin. See, the thing is, Vince like Vince, uh, his beard does try hard. I'll, I will give it that, but as far as actually being competition, it's just, it's just not fair to him. Like, I feel, I feel bad. I feel bad because it's just really not a, not a fair, we're in a different weight class. You don't, you don't put the, it's like one of those old UFC matches where it's like, we're going to have a sumo wrestler fight this 150 pound, uh, 150 pound martial artist or whatever. And it's just like, why, why would you do that? That's like, that's not a, that's not a fair fight. That's kind of the me versus Vince Beard battle. Like, I know we'll put up a good fight and I'll try hard, but... <laughs> hey, good luck with the grind. Uh, good to see you. Thanks for uh, thanks for showing me the deck list. <laughs> I had a very long beard for a while. Foot long at the longest. See, mine's not, mine's not even that long. I usually... It, mine gets to... Oh, no. Is this... Cheese fang, as Krim would say. Are we getting cheese fanged? Azika's chariot. Okay. Uh, well, we'll play a black leaf whiffs go. All right, no, no grease fang, no grease fang. How about no grease fang? We have the fatal push, but we cannot trigger it. Untap land grease fang. Well, this is what grease fang tends to do. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Big board full of cats. Cruise the ch chariot. <laughs> Grease Fang. Has the BNR been discussed? Uh, do we have to kill a cat? What is our most realistic? So we can sweep in two turns. Are we alive in two turns? We want to kill the Grease Fang, but I don't know how we ever do oh we want to kill the chariot so wait we're taking seven. Oh, we have to we have to kill the cat i think or we're just gonna straight up dead yeah grease fang i mean i don't i've never been one to think that grease fang is too good i know that's been a card that people have talked about a lot of times i don't think it's too good it's just like very annoying <laughs> It's very hateable. You can beat it with Graveyard Hate, Instant Speed Removal, but it's one of those decks where it's like, Ooh, I just got this draw and you didn't have the answer. It's like the ultimate like removal check deck. Just like, oh, you didn't have it, so I guess I win the game accidentally. So the the play pattern's obnoxious. I don't think it's overpowered or anything. Like it's it's never managed to become like a top tier deck in best of three, right? It's like it, in best of one, it has been a problem at some points because best of one. Hmm. In best of one, it's been a problem at some points because best of one just doesn't have the the answers for it. There's no sideboarding in graveyard hate, 
But in Best of Three, it's never actually been like problematic, I don't think. Ooh, we get a wish too. Do we just keep this hand? The problem is they can just cast this as Ika's Chariot and make a big board again. Yeah, all right. I'm still not sure this actually gets us out of it because we can sweep here. But then can we beat the Zika's Chariot on the on the backswing? What do we do about that? She old it. Get drained. Flip the saga. Hmm. <sighs> I guess we just wish for fatal. We've done so much wishing for fatal push, which is just like the boringest. <laughs> it's just like the boringest form of wishing, but sometimes you got to do it. How do you feel about scam being so prevalent in modern? I played Mox last weekend, got one turn one double grief several games in a row. Oh, so okay, so we haven't got really in depth on on the modern man list. Uh, it's a. Uh, I was disappointed with no changes. So Watsy came out today during their live stream and they basically said, with these set specific man announcements, expect no changes. So Watsy's thinking is, we're not banning things, period. Like, that's that's Watsy's that's Watsy's current reasoning, from what I understand. They're just they're not planning on banning things. Let's make a Charming Scoundrel. We gotta be able to kill the Grease Fang now. Make a treasure. We are kinda holding on somehow. I don't know if we're pulling ahead, but we're staying alive. Like if they try to Cheese Fang, okay, they do. So they play the Grease Fang, but we can Fatal Push. Get rid of the Grease Fang. Not dead yet. A opponent, would you like to attack us? All right, copy the Charming Scoundrel. Make a treasure. Block. Untap. Uh, yeah, I mean, play the Demonic Pack. Pass the turn. No whammies. No, no not another Grease Fang, please. Please. Please, please, please. Just just let's do a little demonic tactic. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. I'm not like especially concerned about the ref <sighs> All right. Too many grease fangs. I'm not really concerned about the Rafines in format. I don't think uh, I don't think the Rafines in format's an actual an actual real concern. Grease Fang, on the other hand, that one, that one actually is a concern. Hmm. Well, okay. We kind of got, we kind of got cheesed out of that one a little bit. How is Rankle's Prank? Is Rankle's Prank actually good? It's a cool tutor target. I imagine there's going to be a game where we get someone with it. But I feel like I never tutor it up. <laughs> it's there, and the possibility of tutoring up exists. I just never actually do it. Needle for Parhelion. <sighs> the question with, like, so Tormod's Crypt. We want Tormod's Crypt, but I think we'd rather wish it out. Is Pithy Needle the same? Like, are we better off being able to wish? We have three wishes to find Pithy Needle rather than one in our main deck that we can't wish for. So I kind of feel like we're better off leaving it in the sideboard to try to wish for it. So my thinking is, so what did y'all think about the, the no changes being R? Like, it seemed like a lot of people were disappointed. I was disappointed. I just, I don't know what, I don't know. I don't know what Wizards is thinking, what their plan is, what the, like, I don't, I just don't get it. I just don't really get what they're going for. Like, 
that's the that's the part that's confusing to me. Like apparently, like I, I, what is Watsi's goal for modern or pioneer? What is what what are they envisioning? Like what is it wizards when they think about their idealized world of those formats? What do they see in their head? Because I think what they see in their head, it must not be the same as what I see in my head or what like seemingly a lot of other people see in their heads because the choices Wizards makes are just so different, if that makes sense. So they envision Yu-Gi-Oh! Like I almost wonder if that's <sighs> So I've been I've been watching some booster pack openings from other games recently. The last few days I've been watching some booster pack openings like uh Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, One Piece, just kind of like seeing what those games are like and what people do with those games. I mean, Grabby Giant makes a treasure. That's pretty good. It is actually pretty good. Charming Scoundrel also makes a treasure. Well, make a treasure here for what? And one thing I've seen about those games is one thing I've seen about those games is it seems like those games are not games, if that makes sense. From what I can tell, those games are primarily like, I, I don't even know if collectibles is the right word. They're just, they're items. They're items that people buy. <laughs> Because they like the IP or they have nostalgia from their childhood. But from what I could tell for the most part, like the reason people buy tons of Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever is because they like opening the packs and they like seeing the characters more than the game. I wonder if that's what Wizards is trying to do with magic. Like is Wizards trying to... Because, I mean, that's the ultimate win for Watsy, right? Like, if they can just have people give them lots of money to open packs and they don't have to worry about bannings or people complaining because the meta is bad or any of that stuff, that seems like the dream for uh, for Watsy. We are actually exploring today. Yes, we're doing a, doing a little exploring. So I wonder if that's, like, part of... So I didn't, that was not meant to be, like a dig at any of those games. I know there are people who play Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon, but I also know those are the games where like you have whatever, Jake Paul or name some massive YouTuber that's opening this super expensive box on their on their channel or things like that that just like they're not people who are playing the game. There's this huge just like opening and collector scene as well. Hmm. Well, okay, I think what we have to do here is get in get in with our goblin. opponent going to block i think we just wish for the tormod's crypt i would like to play demonic pact but i think wishing for the crypt is too important here like this kind of makes sure that we don't get janked out opponent going to be a little tougher to cheese us opponent grease fang uh sure and and goes to combat Gonna reanimate an Azekas chariot. <laughs> Alright, Tormod's Crypt. Our wish plan actually worked there. I play MTGO and Yu-Gi-Oh! You go players of uh Yu-Gi-Oh! You go players of bands and manless changes routinely. Like Oh! Oh jeez! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Wow! God. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I mean, jeez. I was speaking so highly of our Tormod script, too, and it totally betrayed us. Liliana, have you considered playing Necromancy in the sideboard or maybe the end in the main deck? Um, not really. I mean, I play Necromancy in the sideboard. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Play Necromancy in the sideboard uh, on occasion. I think Necromancy is a good one. The end, it could be worth it. Do you think the end... I guess we'll see what the matchups look like. So the big decks in Modern right now are... Or the big decks in, in Pioneer right now are Rakdos and... 
Rakdos and Mono Green. I don't know if those cards are good enough against either of those. So I guess we'll see what we play against. It's been a minute since I've done... Since I've played much Explorer, so we'll see. My expectation is we play against Mono Green like 50% of the time. If that's the meta, then I'm not sure that like the end is that good. If the meta is more diverse than that and we play against Grease Fang all the time or whatever, then it could definitely go up in value a lot. So I don't know. I wonder if that's combined with like the pack changes to make packs more exciting. I wonder if that's the direction Wizards wants to go. Like rather than magic being about playing magic, it's about like here's people opening boxes of magic. The thing is, ah, magic just doesn't do it very well. That's the other thing. We talked about this a little bit last stream about like about like uh like Agatha's Soul Cauldron, the the version thing. How like magic. This is the other thing I noticed, just doing some research on box openings and other games. Like, so Magic, you got the, the worst version of Agatha the Soul Cauldron, just a normal version. And then the best version's the same thing, except they photoshopped out a little bit of the border. Like, that's the Super Chase version. In those other games, if you open, like, the Chase version, it's like a... Like, you know it. It's, like, very different. The art's different. Like, sometimes it's radically different. Like, a secret layer card. Like, super far out there. Like, very, very different. So, you actually know it. I feel like for Magic to actually be, like, ah, something where you have Jake Paul cracking packs of it on YouTube, if that's what Wizards is going for. Like, ah, you gotta you gotta have some... It's something more than this. Like, I don't know. Like, how do you even know that that's, like, the good egg of the Soul Cauldron? Because it's so much like the bad egg of the Soul Cauldron. So I feel like, I don't know. I feel like if that's what Watsy's going for, they got work to do. Yeah, well, this is a good fair hand. Uh, best of three at the moment. Can you talk about how apparently limited drafting... You, can we talk about how apparently limited slash drafting was apparently on the chopping block? Unless they change the booster stuff. Crazy to think about that limited is not considered a main pillar of play to continue supporting. So I saw that quote. Actually, I had this pulled up because I knew it was going to come up and it's been a big topic. So here, here's the quote and then... I'm probably going to get yelled at, but uh, here, so here's the quote. So talking about the play boosters, someone said, I'm a little disappointed as someone who collects each card and primarily plays commander set boosters were the best thing to happen to me in magic. Hopefully these end up being okay, though it feels weird to try and make draft better by increasing the price of drafts. Mark Rosewater said, if we didn't do anything, draft boosters were going away. This whole change was to save drafting in other limited formats. So this quote ended up causing a pretty huge conversation because if you just read it, it does sound like Mark is saying essentially like Hasbro or someone said like, Hey, we're going to get rid of, we're going to either you fix this or we're going to get rid of draft. Like that's, that's kind of how it reads. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. And maybe this is too generous of a interpretation, but how I read that is actually, Actually, what I think Mark is saying is, who? Hmm. Do we have to rankle prank to kill Illuminator Virtuoso? We could play Demonic Pack, but then we might die. Uh, we can get more value. Right, we're gonna we're gonna be greedy. Let's play Fable. We can get more value out of it. We're fine. There's no way they're gonna hit us for that much damage. This, uh, yeah, we were playing Explorer today. So what I think Mark was actually saying, and Mark clarified this, and who knows, maybe corporate made him say it or something. But Mark, what he, what he clarified is what he meant was basically people aren't buying draft boosters. And the fact that we're not selling draft boosters means that eventually these, we're just not going to be able to make them anymore because they're not profitable. So that's how I think he meant that. Wasn't so much like Hasbro came to us and said, you know, we're going to get rid of drafting. So you better, you better make these play boosters. I think what he was actually what he was actually intending was like, yeah, like we, we're not selling these anymore. And if we don't sell things, we're not going to be able to keep making them. That doesn't really change the end result. And it definitely is like their choices. Like they made set boosters. They made the three booster, different booster product system. They're the ones that added the confusion and all that stuff. So it's certainly Watsy that, that bears responsibility for all that. It was all, all based on decisions that they made. But I will say, I think that's what he was meaning more than like someone is actively trying to get rid of limited. I 
I was actually, I'm actually very curious. So I don't really go to LDSs very much because I live in the middle of nowhere. Don't have, don't have a lot of local uh, game stores to go to. Very curious. Yeah, I guess we just got to do this. Each player sacks two creatures. Thought sees you. Wow, that is a handful of goodies. Um, hmm, we might still be dead. All right, take the hoplite. So I'm curious, do people draft in your local uh, in your local area? Like, can you go to your LDS and just like play a draft? I'm I'm actually curious if that's a thing. Like. How popular is limited in the wild in these scenarios? Is it like actually a super popular thing? A like kind of popular thing? A not really popular at all thing? Oh, let's make a treasure. So they have Reckless Rage, Tempestic Legionnaire. This can be chumped. Oh, I really want to get down. You know what? We're going to play Demonic Pact. We're going to try to do our thing. We might die trying to do our thing, but we're going to try. Oh, Wrangle's Prank not going to be good enough. We need to draw some Fatal Pushes. So in Kill One Thing, we have to Chump Block potentially with the other thing. But then we get a Demonic Pact... All right, Homestead Courage, Counter, Scry. Opponent. On very specific events, I think my LGS has a bunch of variety for FNM, including once a month limited as well as other events. But I doubt you can just walk in and ram time an event with fire. I was anyone at Command Fest Portland over the weekend? Oh, that is trample. <laughs> uh, okay. So I guess we have to draw an... Wow, this monstrous roll thing is really good, isn't it? That trample's brutal. Uh, well, come on! Double fatal push. Double fatal push, please. Hmm. Uh, not enough. So we can wish for a fatal push, but then we still just die. Ugh. Grabby giant betrayed us. Was anyone at... Yeah, the problem is they have a hasty 2-2, two -two, so wish push death. Um, I heard... I heard that, uh, <laughs> that they just simply could not get standard to fire there. Like, literally could not get... Could not get, like, four or eight people together to fire, to fire a standard event. Which, that is very... That is very frightening. Uh, this is this is Explore. We're trying Explore today. Well, we're gonna bring in a bit of removal. We do want something we can wish for, which is, I guess, gonna be the torch. But we can bring in two more removal spells. We can bring in the uh, Brother Sedan's not even gonna do it. Thought Seize is good. Shielder's Edict. Grabby Giant's got his day. That's our that's our hero. Let's go down one Beseech and one Swamp. Run it like that. No one plays Paper Standard or Limit anymore. Arena does those formats better. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, like, kind of kind of where I'm at, right? Like, I think that's the modern, the modern era of Magic. Like, that's just how it is. Yeah, I know it's a Command Fest, but normally, like, if you go to a big event, there's other formats being played, too. The, the idea that just so few people actually play these formats is kind of kind of actually stunning to me. Surprising. I mean, maybe not even surprising anymore. I guess it's not surprising because it's been going on for a while, but... About it. But on to Vanguard. Well, we have an Edict that can get rid of that. Which I think we actually just have to cast right now. Yeah. 
Oh, it's each opponent, so Surge doesn't even matter. Yeah, so I guess we can just pass. We can pass, see what our opponent does. I would love to see GPs come back. Can we get a win-loss channel point prediction? Ooh. Uh, if anyone wants to put it up, I think what I got to do, Cam fan, is I, I think I just got to get a straight-up mod who who just does channel point predictions. I think that might be the the solution. Each opponent sacks a non-token creature. Like an Adonto Vanguard, perhaps. Haha. -ha. Part one of. Paying off. Okay, sure. Fine. Still dies. Oh, but when it plays a land passes. Well, we are going to... Blood Crypt Untapped. Charming Scoundrel. Actually, do we Charming Scoundrel? Do we just run out Grabby Giant? <laughs> I think we run out Grabby Giant. Alright, Grabby Giant. It is here. Old Grabby is here. <laughs> I saw a food thing you're probably going to like whatever you get a chance to read about it. Ooh, what is uh, what is your food thing, Mega Magikarp? Dreadhorde Arcanist. Um, well, go to combat. Oh, we need this to... We really need that to die. Well, go to combat. Hit you with a Grabby Giant. Opponent takes the beats. <clears throat> Blood Crypt untapped, Grabby Giant. And I guess we pass. Opponent untaps. Can our two four drops beat a single two drop? <laughs> God's willing. I mean, we gotta try it. I don't expect it to work, but we gotta try. Alright, opponent has a handful of God's willings. To the top. To the top. Fizzles. Alright, and goes to combat. I mean, they still have to beat two grabby giants, though. They're not hitting us for that much. Yeah, I'm gonna pump and give it trample. Wait, you got pro, you can't do it. Ah! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Opponent learning a lesson about protection. Our current record is one and one, yeah. Our current record is one and uh, one and one. Oh, they protected themselves out of their monstrous rage. Which is still raging in the graveyard because of... Wow, is that a bug? Why is it... <laughs> Why is it still raging? Their graveyard is burning up. Um, okay, we will Charming Scoundrel. Make a Wicked Roll. Put it on the Charming Scoundrel. Hit ya. I mean, we're just going, we're going aggro. We're going aggro. Go attacking. Opponent. Wow, Reckless Rage is okay. Oh, no. Oh, I think this is going to let our opponent get back in it. Double Reckless Rage is real bad. Another Dreadhorde Arcanist. Opponent, another Reckless Rage. Okay, goes attacking. Come on, Rankles, Prank. Oh, let me see the percentages. Rares per sealed pool, rough approximation. Oh, well, okay. Rankles, Prank. Do we discard our hand? Probably. We do have the Castle Lock, Wayne. Yeah, let's let's go all modes. No fear. Hands empty, boards empty. Opponents at three. What do they top deck? A land, but they can get Big J. We draw Temple of Malice. We scry. Wish. 
which has got to gotta be worth keeping right it's gotta be worth keeping it's gotta be all right pass the turn can we wish for something that matters opponent big j well we're gonna draw a wish we untap it's a land play the land play the wish what is our what is our best wish target here we wish for what though is there something that wins us the game? Shieldred's good. Colgan's command puts our opponent to one, but doesn't win us the game. Ooh, is that is Colgan's command the right play? So we Colgan's command make our opponent discard their card, get back the charming scoundrel, and win next turn. That's a that is a winning two turn if our opponent doesn't top deck. We could just get Shieldred and play Shieldred. That's the that's the that's the that's the, the most uh, obvious answer to this problem. Shieldred wins the game. I mean, not necessarily though. All right, we'll do it. We'll play Shieldred. Pwn it down to two. I mean, Shelter doesn't get Reckless Rage. So that's nice. All right, let me let me look at these. I got distracted by the actual game of Magic. Let me look at these percentages, Zach. Favorite Hoplite. Swift Spear. Attacks. We will block. An opponent scoops it up. Okay, so math on new play booster sealed. So how many rares we get on average? Six rares, so that would be one per pack, 4.38% of the time, seven, 3.88, eight, seven percent, nine, ten percent, ten, eleven point two percent, eleven, twelve point six percent, twelve, fourteen point eight percent, and then it starts to go back down. 13, 12 percent, 14, 12 percent, 15, 11, all the way down to 24 rares, 0 0.06. So so the most most of the wow. That's a huge increase. Wait. No, that can't be right. So in your sealed pool, on average, the most common number that you're going to get is 12. That's double. Isn't that double? It would be six in the past, right? With like normal. Wow. If that math is correct, that is a huge increase in rares. Like absolutely... So the number I saw, oh, so I didn't see a number for the actual all math, uh, math out like that. What I saw was 40% of the time you would get more than one rare in a play booster pack, which is still like a very massive 1.4. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that's where I saw it was on their stream. That's still a very big increase. What that really makes me excited for is Arena. Like, I think even that is is probably... Ah, nice thing about this deck is because of Wish, we don't really have to sideboard much. <laughs> we can use the sideboard time for talking. It makes me excited for Arena. Because on Arena, 1.4 rares per pack instead of 1. That's a huge increase. If you're someone that drafts to build a collection on Arena, that's like... That's like such a, oh, I don't think we can keep this. That's like such a big increase. This we're going to keep. We really could use some red mana instead of, <clears throat> instead of this dark steel citadel. <laughs> Magic, why are we playing this artifact land in our deck? We are really all in on the besieged land to the point where we got all these dark steel citadels. We have a new donation from Lucid. Oh, this is a fast start. All right, deck. All right, deck. Oh, that's not good. Max punish Dark Seal Citadel. Lose it, $2 donation. Seth, you dare me to make a cube with every against the odds card in it. That would actually be sweet. I would love to play the against the odds cube. Actually, one of the nicest magic gifts I ever got 
and I I will this was years ago now I think it was after 150 episodes of Against the Odds but I went to an event I think it was the first time I went to Vegas maybe and someone came up to me I don't remember their name but they actually had collected they had these two binders I still have them one of my prize magic possessions they had two binders where they had collected every Against the Odds card in order from episode 1 to episode 150 and they also had uh, the rec. Do we just die? Holy! Uh, they also had the. <laughs> that was a really fast kill. They also had the records for each uh, for each deck, the percentages. So it was like 150 cards in these binders with the records for each of the deck. One of the nicest, one of the nicest gifts that I've ever gotten. So yes, I think against odds, cube would be very uh, very sweet. Lucid, are you are you going to CubeCon? Now that you're a cuber. It was, it had each of the like pole winning against the odds card. So the first one, yeah, I still, I still actually have the, <laughs> I still have the binders, but whatever, oh, I could look back. What was the first ever against the odds card? So let's see. I can go to against the odds here. Uh, this hand looks fine. But yeah, it was a binder. I think it was 150 episodes. But if we go back to like the very beginning of against the odds, so it was like yeah. So there was like a a sage of hours, then a biovisionary, uh, maybe phantasmal bear, or maybe it was illusion lord, a swarm yard, guilty fart druid. So it had uh, the copy of the winning card, and then whatever our percentage was, like marked down. It was it was basically the history of against the odds, like marked down in this binder. That was so cool. Well, all right, thought sees you opponent. Thought sees our wish, will you? Oh, Shieldred. Uh, that's that's fine. Who cares about Shieldred? It's not that good. <laughs> yeah, Heroic can get some very, very fast starts. As we as we just saw there. <laughs> very fast start. Well, Charming Scoundrel. Make a treasure past the turn. We do need a plan for dealing with this Shieldred. A bonus gets and hits us. No blocks. Down to 13. I mean, we gotta do it. If they top deck, they top deck. Demonic bag. Okay, Shieldred's Edict. Well, Demonic Pack, you're gonna have to do some serious work here. Maybe they don't have a land for Shielder. That would be the best. If they don't have a land, opponent hits us. If they don't have a land, well, they don't have a land. Okay. Um, well, how about you discard two cards? Actually, yeah, discard two cards. Shielder, go for the throat. Charming Scoundrel, make a treasure. Okay, Shieldred is out of the way, which is huge. Make a treasure. For beseeching purposes, Temple of Mystery. Do a little scrying. Haunted Ridge to the bottom. I, we might be good. We might be good. Uh, so there's a couple of temples just for, for value, essentially. I mean, scrying is like... 0.6 of drawing a card, right? Who doesn't want 0.6 of drawing a card? <laughs> Who wouldn't want? <laughs> Who wouldn't want to draw 0.6 of a card with a lad? <laughs> How are you, Great Destroyer? Good to see ya. Our gift reviews get to see every week playing everything under the sun, laughing about it. Make me smile every week anyways. Thanks again. We'll pal it in. Thank you for thank you for all the kind words. I definitely I definitely appreciate it. Uh, what do we do here? Do we just draw? Yeah, let's just draw. There's no bow masters and explorers, so I think we're safe to draw a couple cards. Worst case, we can always beseech away the demonic pack. Best case, we find a harmless offering and just get them. Also, beseeching or bargaining is a uh, part of the cost, right? Hey, Seth, I had. I see Seth has suddenly become Reddit from 2009 looking at Thero spoilers. <laughs> hmm? Thero spoilers. Gonna give my tortoise a bath <laughs> wait do you actually have a tortoise i guess bigger question do you actually bathe your tortoise 
Isn't that something tortoises just do naturally? I figured tortoises kind of had that figured out, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they don't. Well, temple. Uh, Black Cleave Cliffs to the bottom. Charming. Uh, one, two. How worried are we about a counter? Yeah, let's just Charming Scoundrel. Right out Charming Scoundrel. Like, if our opponent doesn't have a counter, we get the combo kill, right? In theory. No, 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 no. We just wish for we just wish for harmless offering next turn and get him. Pass the turn. About it. She ulted. That's actually fine. That's actually fine because our opponent's tapped down. Opponent, opponent, opponent. <laughs> I have some bad news about it. Demonic pack. Gain some life. Get drained. We are going to make a wish. We are going to wish for... <laughs> A harmless offering. Opponent, I have a I have a gift for you. <laughs> opponent, what do you choose? What do you choose? Oh, ooh, tough choice, opponent. Lose the game. I would have chosen a different one, but... <laughs> I notice Goldfish keeps reading past my deck link. Uh, I think he's ignoring me. Oh, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it by itself. Oh, let me see. Okay, I, I found it. I found it. Uh, I'm working on a kitchen table, mono red, mountains matter deck that's one card away from being modern legal. Ooh, let me let me see mine, Sabthrill. Also, uh Oh, do you remember the yeah, one of my favorite magic coverage moments. Uh Chris Oh, I wanna say Bacello, I'm probably butchering. Uh that's what's his name? Chris. Chris B. <laughs> But this was before he was known. He ended up, like, making it into the MPL and being a really good player. But this is when no one knew who he was. Shows up at a GP with this demonic pack, this cat pack, uh, cat pack deck. Shows up at a GP. No one knows who this kid is. Crushes the field with his wacky demonic pack harmless offering uh, brew. Is it Bacello? Yeah, it's something like Bacello. And ended up running all the way into the to the top eight. And no one knew no one knew who he was. And he ended up like going on to be like a really good, a really good magic. But there also is Chris Pakula. That's a th this was Pakula was like 20 years uh, before that. He was like in the 90s. But yeah, I think it was Batello or Bacello, something like that. Jimny Amp, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your uh, subscription. Big super thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Do we need to change anything? We bring in... So I kind of like the Fatal Push in the sideboard. Let's bring in the Shield Words Edict. Over a Swamp. Run it like that. Let me look at this deck list. Mono Red Mountains. Ooh. Okay. Blessed Mix Act. I do love... I do love Old School Koth. Mm. One of my favorite Planeswalkers. Panharmonicon. Conjure... Wait, what are we blinking? Oh, Alpine Guide. ETB search for mountain when it leaves. Wait, does that work? Brash Tauner. Oh, we can blink the spawn of Thraxis. I see. What's the not modern legal card? Oh, uh, some smog action. Is this not all modern legal? Oh, Granite Grip. Enchanted creature. Is this the one not modern legal card? Okay. That seems replaceable. That looks uh that looks super fun, Thrill. I like it. I wish I wish there was a way. Like casual decks like that is how most people play magic. We know that. Wizards has stats on it. Like that's how most magic is played. Is most people are most people are playing decks like that against Oh, did I not update it again? Most uh most players are playing decks like that against their friends on their kitchen table that's how most magic is played how do we capture that online or how do we how do we make that happen how do we how do we do that is there even a way to do that or is it just impossible is there no way is there no way to actually make it happen uh well we'll take the shield rid play a black leaf glyphs unfortunately our opponent's gonna get to start doing bank bustery things drawing cards Bone it. Blood Crypt untapped for some reason. Well, let's play Charming Scoundrel. Make a treasure for Beseeching. 
Okay, Fatal Push. I mean, we got two Demonic Packs in hand and two Beseech the Mirrors. So we got a plan. Denny Boywash, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so... Fable in the Mirror Breaker, sure. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big Soup Jim for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Demonic Pack, number one. Get it down. Opponent. Gonna do some looting. Can you find an answer to the Demonic Pack? Discards. Draws. Duress. Sure. Takes a Beseech. Hits us. Treasure. Um. Well, let's kill the Goblin. Dark Seal Citadel. Demonic Pack number two. Wow! Negate off the top. Okay, okay. Pony gets to draw with Bang Buster. Yup. Untaps. Oh, we gotta win this one. We gotta win this one. Opponent flips her Fable. Plays another Fable. Well, we are going to draw two cards. And play a castle lockwing tapped. Charming scoundrel. Make a treasure. Fable of the mirror breaker. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we could end up dying to our own demonic pact here. It is going to be close. We pass the turn. Photo to taps. Do we lose to our... Who's going to lose to this Demonic Pact? Who's going to lose? Since Hasbro needs money, it will be an unsolvable problem for them online, but 30th Anniversary Edition will help. Do you see... Do you see the booster changes as a money grab? Like, is that the... Is that your... What is your perception of it? Because that's been something I've heard from some people online, is they, they just view it as, like, this is purely about making more money. I'm not convinced that it is. I mean, I'm sure that making more money is a happy, happy accident, at least. I don't think they're complaining about it, but I'm not sure if that's the, like, the primary, the primary goal of it. Pony gets in, makes a treasure. Sure. Okay. Wow, they spend the counter. Okay. Okay. Can we find a harmless offering to just straight up win this game? That is the question. That's the question. Well, target opponent discards to you. Oh! <laughs> uh, we will decline. Wow, and that's a that's a one of too. That is one of opponent. Opponent, the choice is yours. The choice is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Choose wisely, friend. Choose wisely. <laughs> Choose wisely. <laughs> yeah, the magic gods have smiled upon us this game. <laughs> I mean, we weren't going to die because we could beseech it away. So we, worst case, we beseech it away. Best case, though, is uh, this and then our opponent salty ropes that we top deck the harmless offering. <laughs> we could have beseeched it, but we wouldn't just win. Like, we aren't likely to die. We definitely won't die there because of Besiege, but Besieging away the Demonic Pack doesn't just win us the game. Well, no. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we could also Besiege the Treasure for Harmless Offering, but what's the fun in that? There's no, there's no excitement there. By cutting the Commander cards out of boosters, it's lowering supply and forcing people to buy Commander decks. Hmm. I'm curious how much commander cards actually like matter i don't know does any do people buy yeah opponent's gonna do the salty rope and i guess i can't blame them um like do people buy boosters to get the commander cards out of the one slot i always thought that was like a secondary a secondary thing plus they're still in collector boosters so i don't know if that's like i i don't think the price of Commander cards is going to increase meaningfully because of this. 
I bet set boosters to pull commander cards. Really? Okay. So apparently some people do do it then. Do you click the smiley face or frowny face after you win by salty roving? It's a smiley face, but that means I did my job, right? <laughs> you, know, you don't want to just win. You want to suck out your opponent's soul and uh, <laughs> send them to the shadow realm. Uh, <laughs> so yes, I, I'm mashing the smiley face if I win by salty rope. <laughs> that means I've actually built a good deck. I mean, yeah, I guess there, there is, <laughs> there is lots of options there. So many choices. Come on, smiley, smiley face. All oh, they're not even going to ask is <laughs> a reminder <laughs> that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magic cards, you get them over at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. Demonic Pack deserves an epic animation. It really does. I will say, so far, so we've we've played four matches so far. Explorers felt pretty fine. We haven't played against Mono Green once. We haven't just played Endless Rakdos matches. We've seen a diverse set of matchups. Win or lose, like, it's actually felt pretty good so far. I don't even know how to get Crowd Surfing Karn. Can I just buy Crowd Surfing Karn? See, the thing is, I feel guilty about emoting. <laughs> Is that a is that just a weird like boomer thing? <laughs> Do you ever feel guilty? Ooh, what are these sleeves? Spooky, scary Halloween. Oh, <laughs> it's uh, it's double double feature the sleeve edition. <laughs> is Soren? Looks like he's blowing out a big puff of smoke. Do you see that? Is that just me? That looks like Soren is like, he's he's a vape vape bro. Definitely hitting the vape. Uh. <laughs> This is kind of double feature. Just like take the art and make it black black and white and we'll call it a day. Evil Dead Sleeves. What is it with chainsaws in old horror movies? <laughs> Prince's Bride Sleeves. <laughs> I don't know. If, would you use these? I mean, I think the Prince's Bride is kind of a classic, but... I don't know if I want it to be my sleeves. It probably would, if I was going to do one, it'd probably be Andre the Giant here. <laughs> you've never, wait, you've never seen Evil Dead or you've never seen Princess Bride? How many, how many of you have not seen Princess Bride? Is that a thing? Are there actually humans in the world that have not seen Princess Bride? I figured that, I figured that everyone had seen Princess Bride. Evil Dead, I know some people, Really? Princess Bride's kind of like a classic. It's a classic. I still can't... What about what about Monty Python Holy Grail? I still cannot get over that most of the Goldfish cast has never watched Monty Python Holy Grail. And they make fun of me for not knowing... In my world... <laughs> in my world, not knowing Monty Python and the Holy Grail, having never seen that, that's definitely worse than not having seen X-Men. I, I'm not taking any more of their gruff about not having seen X-Men because how can how could you insult me for not having seen X-Men if you've not watched Monty Python the Holy Grail? <laughs> that's like that's like an underground nerd culture comedy classic, like <laughs> I know I remember a million percent that Richard has it. Someone else on the podcast said they hadn't. I, I'm assuming Krim must have. So it must have been Tomer? I don't know. I know one of... Because there were four of us on the cast. Richard said he didn't. Maybe it was also Krim. Maybe it was also Krim. I can't remember if the, the second one was... Was Krim or Tomer that said they hadn't seen it. And I was just blown away. Because in my... In my world, that's just as weird as not having seen X-Men. Yeah, how do you get like the Brash Taunter? Every time I see Brash Taunter, I think of <laughs> I think of Holy Grail. There's so many such a quotable movie. It's the best bad movie ever. Yeah, it really is. Alright, gimme give, give me the food, Mega Magic Carp, as we thought sees this. Oh, I don't want to thought sees it, thought sees. Thought sees it, thought sees always feels so bad, but we don't want to put this in the graveyard. We could take this. Maybe we take this to hope they don't. What are they gonna thought sees? Our fable? Sure, let's Let's say Grizzly Self. Chill, chill. I saw someone making four cheese smoked mac and cheese 
in an open grill alongside a bunch of phenomenal looking chicken legs and wings. Don't have an outdoor grill, but it looks like fire. I sent you a photo alongside the cheese and their premium. Mac and cheese is, uh, is top tier. Top tier food. I will never, I will never complain about, uh, about getting beat mac and cheese. Love, love a good mac and cheese. That actually sounds kind of delicious. I'll find there's so many funny parts of that movie like just the individual lines is there is there a more is there a more quotable movie than holy grail i mean i also really think i i also think big lebowski is really funny i think big lebowski is like super super quotable monty python is super quotable what else what else is like s tier just as far as like one-liner quotes that are that are very iconic Oh, I guess Anchor, yeah, Anchor, Anchorman, Anchorman's pretty good. Oh, see, the snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> yeah, Super Trooper says some good, some good one lines. Napoleon, yeah, Napoleon Dynamite's also, yeah, Napoleon Dynamite. What a weird world that Napoleon Dynamite, that Napoleon Dynamite, like, that is not the kind of movie you would expect to blow up and be such a huge movie. He's been really, yeah, I guess uh, Jim Carrey does, I guess, have, he has a quotable face. He has a very quotable face. I'll give him that. Big Lebowski is also on my, also on my top tier as far as quotable movies. Oh, Office, Office Space, Office Space is a good one. Office Space, that's a really, that's a really good choice. Well, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna play a demonic pact and see what. Actually, all right, we have two choices here, chat. We can play demonic pact, hope for the best. We can also, well, I guess we can't even besiege. So yes, we're gonna play demonic pact. Just kidding. One of one things is now going to happen. Dumb and odd. Oh, dumb and dumber. At one point, I when I was young, I, I think that was my favorite comedy movie. I haven't seen Dumb and Dumber in a really long time, but there was there was a point where I thought that movie was so funny. Napoleon Dynamite was a pioneer in the genre of cringe humor, which I personally view as one of the lowest forms of comedy. Really? Do you think so? Napoleon Dynamite is cringe. I don't know. I feel like the Napoleon Dynamite character is actually pretty. <laughs> I don't know. Do you not know people like that? I feel like. I feel like I know people like that. <laughs> Those people actually actually exist. Is there a way we get out of this? What is our best bet? So we draw two cards. Okay. We draw two cards. We hit a land. We beseech away demonic pack for a sweeper. So we draw two cards. We play the land. Besiege. Sack the demonic pack. Get the storm. Oh, we can't rankle sprank, right? Too many bodies. All right, get the storm's wrath. Sweep. All right, well, not 100% dead yet. Maybe like 95. A lot of Grease Fang. Why is there so much? Why is there so much Grease Fang uh, on Arena today? I didn't realize Grease Fang was so popular. Well, play a land. Do we have to just play Grabby Giant? Chariot seems like a problem. I don't know how we beat that card. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think we just have to play Grabby Giant to try to block the Chariot. Grease Fang seems like a really bad matchup for uh, for our deck at the moment. I like humor that's actually funny. My perspective is if you have to be insulting to be funny, you're not funny. Napoleon Dynamite's not insulting, though, is it? Or are we talking about something different? I don't think Napoleon Dynamite's insulting humor. If anything, if anything, Napoleon Dynamite is very, in its own quirky way, kind of like heartwarming. <laughs> Pulp Fiction's pretty cool. For not a comedy, but 
in the non in the non comedy category, Pulp Fiction's pretty quotable. <clears throat> I really love Gatorade Zero. Actually, Chad, do you know <clears throat> do you know anything about Gatorade Zero? Like is this actually gonna is this actually going to kill me? They make it sound like it's got no sugar, it's got like no calories, so the label makes it seem healthy. But is this one of those things where is this one of those things where you find out that actually whatever they're sweetening it with is gonna is gonna make you die? Is it one of those things? No, I'm not I'm not no no, I just really So I used to drink a lot of soda. And I, I don't want to drink soda, so I gave up soda. And the way I gave up drinking soda was was through Gatorade. But then I was drinking a lot of Gatorade. And normal Gatorade actually is like... I guess it's good for like refueling if you're playing sports or something. But it's not actually uh, all that healthy. There's actually like a lot of calories in it and whatnot. So I switched to Gatorade Zero. But I always feel like when it comes to... When it comes to those like healthy drinks, they're actually not as healthy as you, as you think. <laughs> it's not even good in sports. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's maybe that's true. Maybe you should just drink water. Hey, what's up, Shark Boy Supreme? Yeah, but water doesn't have that delicious taste. It's oh, it's blue gator. It's the light blue one. I don't know. Glacial Freeze, the the best. I the best Gatorade. Not that anyone knows the name. Gatorade is just known by color, right? Fake sugar is actually worse. Oh, come on now, Sky Sovereign. Can we just not beat all right. Apparently we just can't beat Apparently we can't beat Grease Fang, no matter how hard we try. Hmm. Wait, there's white Gatorade? I don't think I've ever had white Gatorade. Seltzer. Seltzer is not bad. Water with electrolyte powder. Yeah, maybe maybe I gotta keep looking for another drink. I mean, I feel like Gatorade Zero, it's gotta be better than soda. Not as good as water, but it's gotta be better than drinking like Code Red. I used to I used to be a Code Red addict at one point. <laughs> oh man, I drink so much Code Red. An un unbelievable amount of Code Red. <laughs> glad those glad that is over. Wow, that is <laughs> Honestly, quitting soda, it is actually amazing how much better it makes you feel. I know it's one of those things whenever anyone like stops doing something that's probably not very healthy. They're always like, oh yeah, you know, I stopped doing this and I feel so much amazing. Like feel so much better. But seriously. I didn't realize when I was drinking so much Code Red that because you're used to it. So you don't know, you don't realize that it's making you feel crappy. But once I stopped drinking like two liters of Code Red a day or whatever it was, like it was actually like noticeable. Wow, I actually feel like way better. Ah, oh, the flavor is so good though. Whatever the, whatever that horrible f fake cherry flavor is in Code Red. Oh, so addicting. Um, so Grease Fang, we can bring in Ashiog. We want the Tormod script in the sideboard. We want any instant speed removal we can muster. Shieldred's Edict, Torch the Tower. We'll leave the Fatal Push. Trim. Uh, Rankle's Prank, unlikely to be good enough here. Trim, trim. And. We lost to this deck before, right? Yeah, maybe a grabby giant. Actually, let's get on one besiege. Let's try it like that. I used to drink two 24 ounce monsters a night when I was working. Graveyard just got jab uh, shifts at Jack in a Box. Going to college during the day, it was amazing how little actually affected me by the time I was done doing that. That's a ton of sugar and caffeine. Yeah, I never, never really got into energy drinks. I remember one time. What's the, what's like streaming energy drink? Ah, uh, I can't think of the name of it now, but the one that's like sponsors all the streamers and so forth. But there was one point where they were like, hey, yeah, like it was when Arena was launching. 
like, yeah, we want to like do do like the you know sponsorship thing. I'll have like some energy drink with your name on it. And I was just like, I'm the I'm the wrong person because I like I just literally don't drink energy drinks. I'm the <laughs> the worst person so no i i don't think that's actually possible we just can't do it i appreciate the offer but it would just be very wrong g fuel i think it was g fuel yeah just like it ah, seems so weird to be to be sponsored by something you, that you don't actually use oh uh, i do love my coffee yes i i gotta have i gotta have my pot of coffee in the morning Pot of coffee in the morning, Gatorade Zero in the afternoon. That's the that's the the life. Yeah, I don't think I'd survive without coffee, honestly. How do you drink your coffee though? I've I actually just do my coffee black. I've become a, a black coffee drinker. There was a time when I loaded it up with cream and sugar, but I've I've got a I've got myself to the point where I just drink it pure black now. Ever try Arnold Palmer's? I've heard of them, but I've never tried them. But do I put, I do not put milk in my coffee. Pure black, no milk, no sugar. I mean, if I go out to some place that's like making me a coffee, then I might get something else. But if I'm just making coffee at, at, at home, straight straight black coffee, no, no anything. Each opponent sacks a non-token creature. All right, out of here, Grease Fang. Could really use a wish. A wish for a graveyard hate would be really nice here. Or a castle lock wayne. <sighs> so Grease Fang is gonna get back a Zika's chair yet. None of this is good. Well, okay. Grabby Giant! <laughs> Save us! <laughs> Save us! Get in hit ya. Ah, uh, Grease Fang's brutal. Okay, I'm coming around on Grease Fang being brutal. Brutal. About it, Grease Fang. Link is cheering it for free. Crew it, go to combat, make a million power. Do we even block? Maybe we don't block. Yeah, I mean, if we block, they're just gonna do it again next turn, so I guess we take it. At this point, though, what are we hoping to draw, even? Not a black cleave cliffs, that's for sure. Oh, so many lands. <laughs> Maybe we just can't beat this deck. <laughs> Isn't that three cheese fangs in the top 15 decks? Let's look at the let's look at the Pioneer metagame page. We don't have very good explorer data. I mean, so in Pioneer proper, you got Abzan, Grease Fang, kind of in the... I mean, I think the tier one of the meta is Rakdos, Nykthos. Tier two, probably Phoenix, Humans, Heroic, Lotus Field, Spirits, maybe? Maybe this is like tier 2.5 or whatever. Uh, going after our treasure, milling cards, well, sack... Actually, let's do it this way. Let's just sack it to draw. <laughs> Into it. Oh, I milled another chariot. Ugh. All right. Dead. <laughs> Dead. <clears throat> the end would have helped. <clears throat> yeah, maybe the end is, is worth playing. It might be. I mean, so far, the matchups have not been what I expected. <laughs> So far we've played against we've played against Grease Fang the most, which is very surprising considering the actual meta. It's a combo deck with a decent mid-range plan. Yeah, I don't know how decent its mid-range plan is, but yeah, technically, it can it can yeah. I guess it's not the worst the worst mid-range plan. It's it's reasonable-ish. I mean, Azika's Chariot's just a very, a very strong card. It has a downside that it's playing a bunch of dead cards, which isn't, isn't ideal to be playing a ton of dead cards, but, like, the Parhelions are very dead. A lot of the graveyard filling stuff's pretty dead. Ugh. Yeah, this deck might be pretty bad. 
Mono Green isn't as strong in Explore. It's missing two key pieces. Ooh, so I mostly I mostly stopped playing Explorer because of Mono Green or like really minimize my playing of Explorer. But is Mono Green still not the most played deck? What is what is Mono Green missing? I know you're missing like uh Chain Veil for some of the infinite combo shenanigans. Well, right now we're playing we're playing some uh, some grabby giant. Well, another temple. Playing some grabby giant. Beseech the mirror. Demonic pact. We might switch it up after this game and try some uh, adventures. Mm, Oath of Nissa. Yeah, I don't know if Oath of Nissa is that big of a deal. Like Oath of Nissa is not on arena at all. Come on now. Not on Arena at all, and, uh, and Mono Green is probably the best deck in Historic, or on the short list of best decks in Historic. <clears throat> uh, do we Storm Wrath to hit the Liliana? We really don't want it to ultimate. Uh, it feels so it feels so incredibly bad. Storm's Wrath remove four counters from Liliana the Veil. <laughs> oh, that's about as brutal as it gets. About it. Takes up Liliana. And they have a castle lockwade, so wow, they are playing to rest too. This must be must be ways not. That's so much discard. Well, okay, I guess we might as well thought seize you. Turn on your castle lockwade. Opponent. Rankles prank. Really? Okay, okay, okay. Explorer seems like a place to build brews. Monarch's too strong. Sander is fine, but a little restricted. I view the current prominence of Mono Green and Red Black the same as the dominance of Tronagen five ish years ago in Modern. When you were playing silly things like Empires and Tron, I would love to see more wild and wacky brews, and I feel like this is the place to go. Hmm. Yeah, maybe, 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 uh, maybe Pioneer and Explorer has, has more potential. I don't know, Mono Green and like, uh, you won't be Mono Green puts a pretty hard cap on the fun things you can do. We haven't been playing against Mono Green today. I would say Pioneer is probably the, the closest a format is to, to being modern from several years ago. I don't know if it's it's not all the way there, but it's it's the closest format we have to being modern from like 2015 or whatever. So yeah, I really wish they do something about mono green. That would be the that would be the thing the thing I think that's most actionable. Hmm. Let's just. I guess just hit Liliana. I imagine they can't get rid of this demonic pack. So I think we want to wait and we want to try to draw on the turn that we can. Oh, all right. Shield red. That makes things a little worse. Uh, 10. Uh, do we just have to draw anyway? Probably. All right. Thoughtseize, Charming Scoundrel, Castle Lockwing, down to 10. Well, that's not good. Castle Lockway, Charming Scoundrel. Make a treasure. Pass the turn. We need, we need a top deck harmless offering right now. Harmless offering demonic bargain, or beseech I mean, right now. Right, right, right now. Opponent takes down. Hits us. She altered. Down to four. Well, uh, you discard two. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Show us that top deck. Show us that top deck. Come on. One draw for it. Actually, technically two draws for it. We drop to four. We play the land, one, two, three. 
Oh no, this kills us, doesn't it? Because we drew thought seize. Well, let's go out on our own terms because we're dying anyway. Was it going to be Beseech? Oh yeah, I guess they also have the Gaia Reach. Eh, we weren't going to draw it anyway. <sighs> Boo! Hmm. Well, I will say, I think this deck's a cool idea, but it feels pretty, pretty medium in how good it is. Grabby Giant, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if Grabby Giant has actually proven its worth as a constructed card. The laughter from release day might, might still apply. <laughs> Might still apply. <laughs> yeah, it might might be more of an against the odds deck. I do want, kind of want to try this adventure deck. We'll do. We'll finish this and we'll try the adventure deck. Back to back to bashing grabby giant. We tried. We tried. We tried to make grabby giant legit. Stack is really good at getting one landers, even though it's playing 25 lands. Very impressive, impressive skill. All right, Grabby Giant. This is Grabby Giant's chance. If it is going to prove itself, it's now. Now or never, because we're switching decks. We're switching decks. I'm sure it's going to get Thought Seized into Oblivion. Opponent, wait, right? you can't dress a Grabby Giant. You can't dress a Grabby Giant opponent. <laughs> Did you know that you cannot dress a Grabby Giant? Well, play the land past the turn. Opponent, we'd love to get down this fable, but... I got a feeling. Oh, there's a waste knot. All right. Well, we will make a treasure. If we can get empty handed, then the waste knot can't really hurt us. Fable of the mirror breaker, make a goblin. Pass the turn. Well, when a waste knot deck draws waste knot, it usually does very powerful things. When a waste knot deck doesn't draw waste knot, not so much. Pwn it. Waste knots, triggers, manas, empties our hand, makes a zombie, uses that mana to play a removal spell on our goblin. Well, uh, decline. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. All right, we got to stay empty-handed. That's a game plan. No cards in hand. Would you play this? A Pioneer version with 5-0 looks so cool. Let me, let me see. Abundant Liliana Happy to help, but I'm ticks to down help. Liliana oh, I've always hated gets in for two. Oh, there's demonic pack. Oh, flip the saga. No, demonic pack. Come on, come on. Don't don't fail us twice in a row, demonic pack. We got the pack down. They're mono black. They shouldn't be able to kill it because the, uh, you know, color pie. Hashtag color pie. The thing that used to exist. Opponent takes up discards and gets in. No blocks. Sure. 16. Opponent passes. Uh, let's go with kill. Actually, do we draw? Let's kill your Liliana. I'll be back. Swamp. Flip the fable. Play the land. Pass the turn. Opponent draws with Castle Lock, Wayne. And... Ooh, they found the Gaia Reach. Well, that gives them a way to trigger their waste knot and another Liliana. Okay. Something suspicious. I mean, it's going to all come down to this Demonic Pact. Well, this is fine, because we can just make a... Make a copy. Oh, jeez. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Pwn it. All the answers. Gets it. It's us. Well... Demonic Pact. Draw two cards. And another card. These cards don't save us. Uh. Huh. We're gonna die to Demonic Pact, aren't we? I think we're gonna... Okay, how can we realistically do this? 
is there a way we can realistically do this? Hmm. <clears throat> Is there a way? Is there anything in our sideboard that actually... Huh. Not really. <clears throat> oh, I guess we can wish to bargain it away. So I think we just play Grabby Giant. I guess, so best case, we find the Harmless Offering. We win the game. Worst case, we can wish for Torch to sack the demonic pack and at least not die. Unfortunately, Waste Knot's going to start doing things for our opponent. But we have a Grabby Giant. The Gold Air Gary deck does look kind of cool. I mean, it's got some really cool cards, and then it's got Shield Rid. But it's cool to see, like, the Lord Skitter's Blessings and so forth. Opponent takes up. Um, I guess we just discard the land. Opponent makes some mana. And land. Guess log wing draw. Come on, harmless uh, harmless offering would be such a spectacular draw. Well, we're going to block. Get rid of the zombie. Opponent probably drew Fatal Push. Yeah, drew a Fatal Push. Sure. Takes up the Fatal Push while we discard a Fatal Push. Opponent draws a card. Harmless Offering. Harmless Offering. Well, we make you discard. <laughs> you don't have a choice, opponent. You must discard. There's no option. How do you feel about overcooked? Any potential? <sighs> I normally don't spend too much time thinking about a... Uh... Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I usually don't spend much time brewing or thinking around uh, about alchemy cards just because people really hate alchemy there's no there's no real no real winning as far as content goes with alchemy that i've found so i haven't really uh we gotta get torch the tower we bargain away the demonic pact get rid of the liliana so we're not dead we're not dead so i haven't really put any any effort into brewing around it i will say it's one of the one of the coolest designs from this round of alchemy i think it's a i think it's a really cool design i don't know how uh, so wow opponent top deck shield red okay things are getting worse opponent loots gets to draw a card they have a shield red we do not Opponent gains more life. We get drained. Oh, now we draw the Beseech. All right, well, play the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Make a Goblin. Yeah, we're getting uh, we're getting waste knotted here. Waste knotted. Opponent Shieldred up to twenty three. As far as being like a competitive card, it's probably better than Food Fight, right? Like it's. Jeez. Wow. Well, that's, uh, that's game ending. All right. Well, I will say this deck, it does some cool things, but I, it seems like it's actually pretty, pretty bad. The idea of playing Rakdos, but, uh, replacing all the busted cards with Grabby Giants, apparently, apparently not a way to actually win many games. So I think we're going to end up going two and four with the deck, which... Yeah, I mean, this game's so incredibly over. We've just gotten absolutely... I mean, our opponent also did top deck really well there. Like, we were both empty-handed, and they went... <sighs> they went shieldered into go blank, which is just the... About, like, literally their best possible draw. So that part was a little bit unfortunate. But overall, I will say this deck, it does some cool things. Grab... 
I don't know if Grabby Giant's good, though. Even in this deck, which is supposed to be, like, a Grabby Giant deck, I don't know. I think Grabby Giant equaled, equaled not impressed. Not impressed overall. Why was the deck not more successful? I think it just doesn't have enough, like... I don't think it has enough power. I think when it comes down to it, it's like got a bunch of cool synergies and you can do neat like, oh, I like Krabby Giant into my like demonic pact or whatever. It's got some neat synergies and we saw like wish do cool things on occasion or like demonic pack win games on occasion, but it felt more of like an against the odds deck where like every few games you do something like pretty interesting that you don't see anyone else doing. But the games in between, you just kind of get wrecked by people who are like, oh, I'm just going to, like, play the good cards and attack you with them. And you're kind of like, eh, I'm holding a bunch of wishes that are, like, three mana to get a shield redeeming. So I kind of want to try this uh, adventure deck, though. I found this adventure deck. There is there is someone in, uh, in Japan... There's someone, there's someone in Japan who's been going to these small Japanese tournaments... And is just is just crushing people with this adventure deck, just absolutely crushing. I think that the same person, Tiana Tianka Ryu, has gotten their deck list published like six times in the last week or something. They just go to all these small events, they play this adventure deck, and just absolutely smack people. So I want to give the deck a try. Apparently, it's working in these small local Japanese tournaments because it's not like it showed up once or twice. It's showing up again and again and again. So this is. I would consider this like adventure burn. So we got some old adventures, the classic Bone Crusher, Love Struck Beast. We got the old adventure payoff, so we didn't get this time Edge Wall and Keeper, Lucky Clover. In the way the deck finishes a game, I think is you just stack up a bunch of Lucky Clovers and then cast Heart Flame Duelist and Lightning Bolt a bunch of times, cast a Bone Crusher and Shock a bunch of times. So I think that's the goal of the deck. It's just kind of like nine adventures but apparently nine adventures is actually like kind of really effective at least in small japanese tournaments so i know the japanese seriously have some really like the meta is different but so many cool brews have come out of japan over the years it's kind of if you ever look at the history of if you ever look at the history of magic there's actually been over the history of magic this like a back and forth between different countries as to where magic is most dominant. There has definitely been times where Japan has been the number one place for magic in the world, where they have outpaced everyone, where the Japanese just like take over. There's been times when the US has been there in North America. There's been, I believe, cases where Europe was number one. But I think the biggest battle has always been uh, North America versus Japan it tends to go back and forth, where the Japanese will pull ahead for a while and then North America will... We'll make a comeback, and then the Japanese will adapt and take over. Kind of an interesting side note in Magic's history. Questing Druid is definitely one of the sweetest Wilds of Eldorain cards. Gilded Goose Hong Kong. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Lots of Edgewall Innkeepers, no adventures. Well, let's just Lucky Clover go. I wonder if it's wrong to run out... I wonder if it's wrong to run out Edge Wall and Keeper on turn one. I remember in standard most of the time I didn't want to do that. Ooh, Sir Ginger, eh? Oh, is this like Harden Scales? We draw a pathway. Well, a pathway. Pathway on red. Grab Big J, pass the turn. Hey, Seth, what's the reason you had to create a new YouTube for the podcast? I don't understand the thing about making a new channel to upload it earlier. So the the main issue, the main issue with, uh, all right, Trail of Crumbs. Oh, they're a food deck, and they're using Sir Ginger as a food. That's kind of cute. That's actually very cute. Uh, I don't think we're going to block that, though. We will take our beats down to 17. An adventure would be pretty good. Ooh, Heartflame Duelist. That is an adventure. Oh, we have we have options. We have options. So this is three minute instant. I mean, we gotta go with that. Okay, so we will. Oh, how do we do this? All right, shock ourselves. Ouch. 
Don't play an edge wall innkeeper. Pass the turn. We can double up the Heart Flame Duelist. Get rid of the Sir Ginger. Get rid of the Gilded Goose. Opponent. Yep, yep, yep. Sacks, triggers. Pays. In response. Oh, this is going to be a very good Heart Flame Duelist. Heart Flame Slash. Get rid of the Gilded Goose. Copy it. Get rid of the Sir Ginger. Out of here, out of here. Next turn, it's going to draw us two cards. So the main reason to put the podcast on its own channel. One of the one of the issues, one of the issues was um, one of the big issues was we have a budget magic, or some sort of gameplay video, goes up on uh, on Mondays. Uh, we'll just play a giant killer. Draw two cards. Edgewall Innkeeper is quite the card. And go attacking with our Edgewall Innkeepers. Ooh! Wait, we get lifelink now because of the Heart Flame Duelist? Oh, this is looking uh this is looking good. This is looking super good. Instants and sorcerers you control have lifelink. So we can double bone crush or gain four. So the main problem with the podcast is it was getting posted at the same time as a gameplay video. And posting two videos at the same time doesn't usually work out well on YouTube. They kind of cannibalize each other. So the way that we were trying to get around that was by... Huh, shield or day. The way we were trying to get around that was by um, posting the podcast super late. So the podcast was going up in like the middle of the night, of the, essentially. But that was not doing the podcast uh, any service because who's around to watch YouTube at, at whatever, 5 a.m. or it was like literally the worst possible time to post a video. So eventually we decided we would just uh, put it on its own channel to avoid that. The other upside is we try to post like a video a day on the main YouTube. That was one of the reasons that Commander got its own channel a, a few years ago. We try to post one video a day. The other thing getting a podcast channel does is potentially allows for, potentially allows for uh, more podcasts in the future. So that would be another thing that could be a possibility that just wouldn't be as much of a possibility with the old system. Because the Japanese language requires less syllables for all their numbers, the average Japanese-speaking person can compute basic math in their uh, head faster than an English speaker. For this reason, Japanese players never miss lethal with their Bone Crusher Giants making adventures tier zero. Wait, did I miss? Did I miss lethal? Was this? Is this a sneaky jab at me? Did I just? Did I just miss lethal? It's always 5 a.m. somewhere. <laughs> I mean, technically, that's correct, right? The best kind of correct. Showdown of the Skulls. Oh, God, those are some hits. Um, so. Now what? How do we close this game out? We're at 20. Let's just play a Lucky Clover. We'll just wait. We don't need to do anything big this turn. Play a Lucky Clover. Sacred Foundry tapped. Hit you with... Hit you with a Bone Crusher. I mean, next time we're going to just burn them out. Doubling up these adventures is so much advantage. Opponent blocks. Opponent. Opponent. <laughs> Opponent. Oh, there's also on the Commander channel, we're doing a kind of a mailbaggy podcast uh, for the Commander Clash podcast. So if you have questions that you would uh, like answered by the Commander Clash podcast crew, go to the Commander channel and drop in your questions. Probably today, because I think we're recording the podcast tomorrow. So, all right. Can we win here? So, step one. Step one. Torch a cat. Put a counter on the Edgewall Innkeeper. Step two, play an Edgewall Innkeeper. An opponent scoops it 
up? Hey Seth, glad to catch you on their stream. If you would like, uh, if you would like, ugh, if you would, would you like to, oh my god, if you would, would you like to at my Vesuvian Duplomancy, I think that's saying would you like to look at it, yes, I would love to, I would, a Vesuvian Duplomancy is a cool card, I would love to, uh, I would love to check it out, how are you today, Icy Ruin, thank you for the cheer, by the way. We need to, we need to revisit Vesuvian Duplomancy, this is a card that, was definitely a high pick against the odds card when it first came out. Also, shout out to uh, Wiley Beggett, one of the one of my favorite newer artists in Magic. So good, mm. Mm. love uh, love Wiley art. But when it first came out, this was like a top tier against the odds card. We played it a few times, super difficult to use. But now that we're into three year standard, the card's still hanging around, so it might be. It might be time to revisit it with some of the new new additions. Like having a creature that's also a blink effect in twining twin seems actually really good for the deck. Yeah, it looks uh that looks spicy for sure. I do wonder about how are we getting to what is this? Oh, it's just a blink effect. I do wonder if we need more early game creatures. But I guess if you can uh <laughs> Untap with Haughty Jin and just uh, target her a bunch of times with the Duplomancy out. Things are going to get pretty funny pretty quick. Uh, all right. Opponent. Food. Playing actual food. Like food mid-range. What do we want against food mid-range? Non-land permanent cards and graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield. That would shut down... The cat, do we even care? Do we just run it back? Do we just, yeah, you know what? Let's just run it back. We're just gonna stop them, we're fine. Oh, Overcooked, so on Overcooked, yeah, 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 yeah. So Overcooked, I think it's one of the inter most interesting alchemy cards, although I don't know if we'll ever get to uh, get to see it just because it's an alchemy card. I think that's the, the TLDR of Overcooked. We do need to play some Food Fight at some point. That's a card that's been on the list, but we just haven't actually gotten to. Um, hmm. Ah, do we love Struck Beast? We could also just play a tap land. Let's wait. This Love Struck Beast is gonna make so many more tokens if we get down these Lucky Clovers first. We gotta, we gotta be a little greedy. Gotta be at least a little greedy. Oh, Slicer. Slicer. I mean, I like that Slicer at least close out games. I will give Slicer a lot of props for that. Commander game's got to end sometime. And uh, Slicer Slicer makes that happen. Uh, how about a Lucky Clover? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Watsy really, they learned that the adventure payoffs were a little uh, over the top last time. You notice there's no Lucky Clover. There's no innkeeper that's less than like four or five mana. There's no, um, ooh, Vraska, wow, okay, brutal. Vraska, there's no, um, yeah. Well, that's a bummer. Let's play a Lucky Clover. Double up a heart's desire. There's also uh, nothing like our opponent's card advantage engine. So they printed all this adventure stuff. They just didn't print any of the payoffs. Yeah, the four mana, like, uh, they made them not competitive. They made them so like, oh, maybe you can like call back to it or like play it in limited. But they certainly powered them down to the point where they're not going to be, not going to be key cards in standard or anything like that. Shook. Luckino, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Wow, one is going off. Big soup here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That Veroska was really bad for us. Well, we'll see. I assume they're going to be able to Veroska again to blow up another Lucky Clover. I mean, if we get to double questing, that's a lot of card. Wow, they take the... They take the, really, the giant killer of all things. Well, I mean, in that case, we play the land. We play the Edgewall Innkeeper. We pass the turn, and uh, we will double up this questing duo during our opponent's turn and see what happens. I think they have to kill the Lucky Clover. For Raska to kill two Lucky Clovers is pretty good value. Wow, the greed. 
The greed opponent takes it up. Oh, they got binding metal gods. Okay, that makes a little more sense. They actually had an answer. Opponent going after the lucky clover. Well, seek the beast, except twice because of lucky clover. Oh, we really got to kill our opponent now. Now that they've killed two of our lucky clovers, we there's no mercy. There's no mercy allowed. We gotta we gotta take him out full full force. Opponent passes. We draw a giant killer. How many things can we play this turn? One, two, three. Ah, not as many as we want. We're going to lose something. Well, okay. Sh we got to play the showdown of the Scalds. Let's play this on green. Play this on green. Showdown of the Scalds. To draw some more cards for next turn. Torch the tower. Let me re I haven't seen Wicked Wolf in forever. Sack of food. Put a counter on it. Tap it gains indestructible. There are no foods. Uh, Alright, so. Torch the tower. Bargain. Sack. Get rid of the Wicked Wolf. Keep the Heart Flame Duelist. No attacks. Our exile zone's nice and full. Our opponent's kind of going off, though. They still got Veraska. They're still doing fine. Hey, MTG Goldfish, I want your thoughts on this. I've started playing Wizards in Historic, but I think that Gotha Companion is useless, so I've switched it for the literally unplayable Lurus Companion to confuse opponents in game one. Is it worth it, though, for the bit, or do you think Gotha adds enough upside to the deck that it should be included? I'm kind of a Jagatha skeptic, personally. Um, like, so I assume you're playing best of one. In best of one, there is no, no real downside to having a companion, right? Because you can't really... You can't really do anything anyway. Like, there's, there's no use for those sideboard slots. Huh, so we have to torch the tower, but we have nothing to sack? Huh. I guess we can just torch the Veraska? This Veraska is actually kind of dominating this game way more than I would have guessed. Losing all those Lucky Clovers was brutal. Well, uh... Yeah, torch the Veraska. Get some counters. Pathway on red. Love struck beast. Get a counter. Pass the turd, pass the turd. So I think that Jagatha might be technically correct in best of one, just because like 5% of the time, you're gonna end up in this weird flood out game where it might be relevant. So I think it like, ah, if you don't have any other use for your sideboard slots, it's probably technically correct. I like the Lurus Juke Out plan, although that's like, that's a pretty short term plan, I think, because eventually your opponent's going to, yeah, we might be dead this game. Eventually your opponent's gonna realize pretty quickly that it's not actually doing anything. So I think it's, I think it's pretty short term in its value. Well, we can finally get rid of this Verasco, which is done an absolutely over the top amount of work this game. Too much work, I think, for us here. Play the land. Um, chop down the Troll King. Grow the Love Struck Beast. This is like an old school standard food deck our opponent's playing. Well, we grew a big love struck beast. <laughs> Does it matter? Pass the turn. About it. Oh, there's the card advantage, the Trail of Crumbs. Yeah, they didn't print anything like Trail of Crumbs this go around either. I mean, how often does Wizards get to the point where it can actually cast Jengatha? I imagine it has to be like 
some very, very small percentage of the time. Whenever I play you against wizards, I'm just like dead on turn three. In best of three, I would potentially argue that a sideboard slot is more valuable than a companion that you're going to use. So I, I remember this being like a, a very... A very, very silly argument from Wizards when Companion first came out. They were like, oh no, like, is a Companion really worth more than a sideboard slot? And this was as they were, like, breaking every format and before the Rada. So I'm not making that argument. Yes, like, in a huge percentage of times, Companions are worth more than a random sideboard slot. However, however, if you're, like, going to use your Companion 2% of the time or something then maybe a sideboard slot is actually more valuable. I, I think there are scenarios where the sideboard slot is actually better. Well, go, go, love, strike, beast, I guess. So go to combat. Actually, how does this work? If we attack, this becomes indestructible. They can double block. Oh, this card advantage engine is really bad for us. Um, let's, yeah, I guess just play Bone Crusher and pass. Because our opponent was able to Verasco away all of our payoffs, and they stuck the Trail of Crumbs, I think that... That was a weird choice. Uh, I think that our opponent's pretty heavily favored here, because they have a card advantage engine, we do not. Although we are playing the ultimate... <laughs> The ultimate Eldering battle, food versus adventures. Oh god. Meat hooks away the board. Okay. Oh, but I don't even know if that was good for our opponent. Because our opponent ended up losing. Uh, they lost their card advantage engine. They lost the food production from the goose, which is so good with trail of crumbs. I mean, maybe they just have a plan for it. Murderous Rider. What is our opponent's entire collection from... <laughs> from Eldraine? Are they just a big Eldraine fan? All right, Murderous Rider, sure. And about it. Goes attacking. Yep. Can't stop that. Down to nine. Sir Ginger. Sure. Opponent passes. Well, there's a Lucky Clover. Nothing to do with it, though. Well, play Big J. Lucky Clover. That Veroska. That Veroska got us so good. Hey, what's up, Zeus? How are you? Welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Great Henge. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ooh, okay. I think our opponent must have played during original Eldraine. I get the I get the feeling that they played during original Eldraine and that was <laughs> that was when they got most of their cards. I can't believe you would en uh, enter the Eldraine exclusive ladder and just get beaten up by randos with a historic deck. <laughs> I mean I mean uh we're also playing a historic well not historic explorer deck but yeah, the problem is, like, I think this matchup is just purely going to be who who has a card advantage engine. That game, it was our opponent. Hopefully, this game, it is us. But I feel like that is... I feel like that is essentially... Essentially the entirety of this matchup. Like, do we get to keep Lucky Clovers and Edge Walling Keepers? Or does our opponent get to keep their Trail of Crumbs? Alderaan is one of the most busted sets from the from the modern era. No doubt about that. By far. Not even close. It's like the 2020 edition of Urza's block or whatever. Well, I mean, we got some good we got some good adventure cards. We got no payoffs, which is kind of awkward. I just realized this mana base has no basics, which is making me very uncomfortable. I am not a fan. You gotta play a basic. You gotta to the point where we're gonna have to we're gonna have to change this after the match. We just we can't play zero basics. We're gonna get field of ruined and lose. We can't do it. Uh, well, let's play the lucky clover. That's payoff number one. We do need lands. Bone it over onto untapped. Trail of crumbs. They have their engine going. Makes of food. We draw land. Well, we will play the land, 
and pass the turn let the burning commence hopefully about it land and passes well six yeah lucky clover x2 to the face to the face I mean, that is a lot of burn. That's six damage to the face. Power will Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, untap land. Heart Flame Duelist. Get the life link going. Uh, in a weird way, we're not that far away from winning. I don't know if in practice it's going to work out, but... All right, Fatal Push. Well, in response, double stomp ya. Gain some life. Hit you to eight. I mean, our opponent's also a food deck. So we know they can they can gain life with their food. Very afraid of Vraska coming down here. Opponent land. By New the Old Gods. Kind of like Vraska. Blows up the Clover. Sure. Well, that's another. Okay. Clover number two. Come on. One more. One more burn spell. One more burn spell. One more burn spell. One more burn spell. Opponent gets a land. Come on. Come on. We're so close to just burning them out from 20 with adventures. If they didn't keep having answers to our lucky clovers, opponent plays a land. Oh my gosh. Every time. Every time. Well, okay. Stomp. How do they always how do they always draw multiple answers to Lucky Clovers? How is that possible? Well, oh, play a bone crusher. A very sad bone crusher past the turn. Opponent. Untaps. Binding goes away. Wicked Wolf to kill the Bone Crusher and sacks a food and draws a card. Hmm. All right. Sure, sure, sure. Opponent finds a Gilded Goose, kills our Bone Crusher for free. Oh. Gilded Goose makes another food. So the Wicked Wolf's never gonna die, that's for sure. Opponent's gonna draw infinite cards. Yeah, this is the this is the same nightmare we were talking about. Like we uh, we can't kill their engine and they can kill our engine, and that is that is the problem. That is the problem that means we are going to lose this game. <laughs> like Again, we drew we drew two Lucky Clovers, but our opponent just has all these ways to kill it. They found a Lucky uh, Trail of Crumbs, and we we just can't kill it. Opponent. More Wicked Wolves. We almost got the Super Aggro Burnout, that's for sure. I mean, they don't need... I think our opponent just has won the game at this point. They don't, they don't, they don't really even need the life anymore, because they have plenty of big blockers. Opponent finds a Meat Hook Massacre. Yeah, I think this is just over. We, boy, we dealt like 16 damage very explosively. But our opponent's ability to kill our payoffs was very, very, uh, very effective. All this random, random enchantment and artifact hate. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Um, well, I guess we passed the turd. How could we win? We need to spin into like double heart flame duelist and have our opponent be tapped out and not have any food and we have a turn i guess so it needs to be like heart flame duelist land land something like that opponent combat attacks should have abraded the food uh, i don't know if there was a i don't know if there was a time where trying to abrade the food would have been uh been ideal well, this better be a good Seek the Beast. 
Love struck beast, another seek the beast. Those cards don't win us the game. Land and land, those cards definitely don't win us the game. And, well, uh, yeah, I mean, even if we seek the beast, there's not enough mana to do anything with it. Well, apparently food. Ah, apparently food better than adventures. That, that one was brutal. Without PNLR, Torch doesn't seem as good. Oh, you mean Pia just making, like, tokens to sack? I mean, Torch is still fine, right? It still... It still kills a thing. Like, what is what is the next best... Uh, what is the next best option for removal? So, like, you gotta... If you need one mana removal, is there something that's better than Torch? Even if you're bargaining it somewhat infrequently. Ugh. So much card draw, but no mana. No card draw, but lots of mana. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I guess we'll keep this one. Doesn't, does not excite me. No, no payoffs, no fun stuff. Opponent, Swamp. Well, Duress is a whiff. Is this someone else playing Waste Knot? It's gotta be. You don't play Duress in your main deck unless you are really gung-ho about the idea of casting discard spells. About it. Mm -hmm. Cast a Lockway. Well, stomp your face. Untap. More lands. Play the land. Pass the turn. You get a bargain the creature that was going to die to the wolf. So bargain is only tokens, enchantments, and artifacts. So you can't actually... You can't actually bargain a creature, unfortunately. That's something I've forgotten at various in various games. Well, that was not the best go blank ever. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we just stomp. That's awkward. Oh, that's really awkward. Temple Garden tapped. Oh, I want the card draw from this questing druid, but I think we got to play the Bode Crusher. About it, Gaia Reach Sanitarium, Liliana. Enough with the mysteries. Digs down to get rid of the Bone Crusher. Oh, I've always hated clovers. Well, Lucky Clover's nice. Our opponent's deck should not be very good at getting rid of Lucky Clover, and we can instant speed questing druid. Not drawing cards. Hey Seth, glad to catch you live. Currently wrecking people in ranked with a Sarak the Archledge. Ooh. Some uh some combo action. Nice. What uh what does your deck look like? I assume it's a try to make a Sarak free and then cast it a bunch of times. Hmm. Alright. Don't overthink things. Interesting. Huh, how are we gonna play these cards? We can play land questing druid innkeeper or we had to torch the tower. Opponents leaving all their mana up. Oh, this is tricky. This is very tricky. Hmm. <laughs> So we can just show down to the Scalds, let everything go to waste, draw a bunch of cards for next turn. We can Questing Druid. Yeah, I think we do it this way. I think we play the Innkeeper. <clears throat> Innkeeper, Questing Druid that's about to go away. I think we just have to give up on the showdown of the Scalds. Questing Druid, draw a card. Opponent has a fatal push. Okay. Well, play down to the bugbear. Towards the Liliata. Towards the Liliata. Get a counter past the turn. 
Well, we didn't get the fullest of value, but that wasn't that wasn't bad. Pound it. Go for the throat. They don't have a waste knot, so it's hard for things to go too wrong without our opponent having a waste knot. Well, let me see, SVG. Uh, about it. Turgrid. Okay, that is that is a frightening card. Play the land. Are we gonna die to Turgrid? Is our opponent playing our deck? Is this our old our old Turgrid waste knot deck? Usually these decks don't play that many Turgrids, or even any Turgrids. And there's the waste knot. Okay, that's a good one. Alright, we draw and discard. Opponent gets to draw a card. Crawling Barons. We draw nothing. Well, okay. Jagatha passed the turn. We really need some action. And there's a Turgrid and a Waste Knot. And a guy reach sanitarium. Bonnet guy reach sanitarium. Triggers. I mean, I guess we discard the land is the least of the bad options. Yeah, discard a land. Opponent discards a guy reach, makes some mana, steals our land. And as a thought sees, well, I mean, I guess this is our only option. Stomp your face, stomp your face. They steal Jengatha, though. This is, this is bad. Like, Turgrid actually stealing things means you lose. Ah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely super sweet. Uh, Sarek is definitely a fun card to go off with. And there are, like, a lot of, a lot of combinations of ways to, to get it to free. Yeah, it looks, uh, that looks fun. That looks sweet. Opponent plays another land, gets Lockwains to draw cards. Yeah, we cannot abide by our opponent just stealing all of our things. This is not good. Oh, there's an innkeeper. Maybe we shouldn't have put Jengoth into our hand. Yeah, I don't I mean, how do you... How much can you play around a Turgrid? You gotta kill Turgrid, but our deck doesn't... <laughs> Doesn't have the ability to actually kill Turgrid. Hey, what's up, Spoon? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Similarly to Snuggle Bear, I've been using your budget gate deck, getting to plant them uh, in seasons. Primetime's so good in the deck. Yeah, Gates is actually like a very legit card. Fire up the lair. I mean, the lair just dies to Shieldred, right? Like, or to Turgrid. Like, it's not big enough to. To actually get past a... Why do you want to tap all of our red mana? It's not big enough to get past the Turgrid, which is an issue. So I think we just got to build a big board and hope. Like, uh, okay, Lucky Clover. Well, we're out of cards. Our board is big. We have two Lucky Clovers. Our opponent's at nine. If we can draw Heartflame Duelist, we literally just burn him out. Like, nine damage at the face. Oh, this is a big spin. All right, towards the tower. Opponent draws a card. Come on, Duelist. Come on, Duelist. That would be such a good win. Opponent. Liliana. Happy to help. Opponent. Takes down the Liliana. We'll sack a Bone Crusher Giant. Opponent gets our Bone Crusher Giant. Things are getting worse. Things are getting worse. Opponent. Castle Lockway. Passes. We draw. <laughs> Another Lucky Clover. <laughs> you know they're gonna you know they're gonna activate their Gaia region. We're gonna discard our Heart Flame Duelist and cry. Cry ourselves to sleep. Opponent. Untaps. She old red. Okay. Well, this is making things worse because now our opponent's going to start to gain life. Oh, that would have drawn us so many freaking cards. Oh. <laughs> Hooray. 
Uh huh. Yeah, opponent takes up Liliana. I think this is pretty much it. Like, if oh, we needed that quest singer with so desperately, that's so unfortunate. Yeah, torch the tower. Okay, uh, that is not the card we were looking for. The questing druid, that was the card we, we were looking for. That was a draw eight. Two mana draw eight to find a heart flame duelist to win the game. Instead, <laughs> our opponent looted it away, and they have our questing druid. And uh, now the problem is this shield is going to gain our opponent so much life it doesn't matter. Hey, what's up, uh, K Cast Mac? How are you? Bonnet, go for the throat. Throws a questing druid. All right, that's a, that's a good draw. Opponent. Guy reach Sanitarium. There goes a land. Opponent gets the land. Makes a mana. Trigger shield red. So now, is there a way we can win? Is it even possible that we can win? I guess we have to draw... Oh, I kind of hate shield red. I guess we have to draw Questing Druid. Well, all right, one more draw. It's got to be like Questing Druid into multiple things. Unfortunately, there's not many Questing Druids left. I think there's one. Yeah, that's not good. Opponent attacks us with our Jagatha and our Bone Crusher. Well, we have learned that if uh, Turgrid sticks on the battlefield, it is pretty good. Heart Flame Duelist. That's the card we wanted a few turns ago. Now it doesn't matter. It can deal 12, but our opponent is shielded it up to 16. Wow. Ooh, getting your appendix out. Ooh. Is your appendix bothering you, or is it just one of those things where... Huh. I don't know. The sideboard might... What is a sideboard trying to fight? What does a Japanese metagame look like that this is a sideboard? In what world... In what world does have, having no answers to Shieldred? What it, what is the Japanese meta? I'm so curious. Everyone's playing White Weenie? White Weenie and Lotus Field? It must be. It must just all be Soldiers versus Lotus Field versus Grease Fang, maybe? With these cards? <laughs> like, Grease Fang hate. Grease Fang hate. Lotus Field hate. Grease Fang slash Planeswalker hate. Mono White hate. Aggro slash artifact eight, mono white eight, lotus field eight. <laughs> no shield or date. We literally do not have a card that we can bring in in this matchup, I don't think. I guess you could like try to pithy needle Liliana. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I mean, lotus field's been a real deck in, like, the com lotus field combo's been a real deck in Pioneer for basically forever, so. Yeah. I've Fry is also good against, uh, like, blue-white control decks, Teferi control decks. Well, I mean, we're going to try this. We know our opponent's playing a lot of discards, so how many of our cards actually resolve is a fair question, but this is a fine hand. We might have to do some brewing with adventures at some point, because I feel like... I feel like it's an archetype that has potential. Not sold on... Oh, wow, they actually hit with duress. Our deck has not many things that are duressable. Not many. Uh, Temple Garden Tap, get in for one. Opponent down to 19. Opponent. Yeah, stuff for Mono Green, too, that's true. Nothing for Shieldred, though. <laughs> Nothing for Rakdos or Shieldred. Opponent plays the Tap Land while Inspiring Vantage. Run out of Bone Crusher Giant, draw a couple cards towards the tower worst card ever <laughs> get in hit ya down to 17 about it no no me hug masker no me hug gotta reach sanitarium liliana okay okay sure 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 going to tick down i mean we'll just sack bone crusher Stomping Grounds. Showdown of the Scald. Exile. Okay, those are not bad. Hit the Lily, hit our opponent. I mean, we. I guess we gotta kind of be the aggro, because we know that Shieldred's coming in Turgrid, and we can't kill him. <laughs> so I guess we just gotta be aggro enough to try to win through them. Opponent, Crawling Barons. Kalitas. 
Hmm. Okay. So. So, 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 so. Well, let's play the questing to withdraw two. Counter on the innkeeper. Stomping rounds untapped. Torch the tower, the Cali toss. Grow the innkeeper. Torch the tower, the Cali. I guess if we just draw all the torch the towers, that adds up to a way to kill a shieldred. Grow the innkeeper. Adventure the love struck beast. Grow the innkeeper. I mean that was that was a good turn. That was a pretty good turn. That was a pretty good turn. If we get to untap, our next turn's gonna be even better. She old red, okay. But we got a big board. We might have a big enough board. Sure, we get drained. Trigger. So if we attack with everything, opponent blocks here, takes four, five, six. Oh, this is just lethal, right? So we just flame slash your face, put a counter on something small. Opponent goes to seven, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that looks, that looks lethal to me. Grow you, get drained, get drained. But, 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 opponent's dead. Oh, hey, what's up, uh, Ryo Knight? How are you? Last game, you could have cast Heart Flame Slash, copied it three times, killed children, and Turgrid, and gained 12. Isn't it true you don't ha uh, it isn't true you don't have answers? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, we wouldn't have gained 12, right? You have to have the... Did we have a Heart Flame Duelist on the battlefield? So you gotta have a heart flame on the battlefield to gain the life. But it is true that if you stack up enough luff, lucky clovers, Melon Crusher Giant can kill can kill just about anything. But we don't just have a we don't have a clean, easy answer, let's say. So that was yeah, we could have killed the things, but then we would have just died on the backswing. We would have needed a we would have needed a duelist in play, and then we would have gained 12 and actually. Well, I like this hand. We'll see how much of it survives the onslaught. Ooh, go to five? Opponent. Well, I'll go to four? Wait, is this the scoop? Are we just mulliganing and scooping? Is this the I really want the waste knot? I mean, waste knot without waste knot is much less explosive. I don't know about mulling to four for a waste knot, but... Wow, this hand might be really good then. All right, untap land, edge mulling keeper. Opponent, did you keep a fatal push among your four cards? Yes. Well, okay, Fatal Push, two lands, Waste Knot is my guess. Oh, no two lands, all right. Uh, untap land and Lucky Clover. Go. Opponent passes. We find a land. Well, play the land on red. Pass the turn. Oh, it is time to seek the beast. Opponent finds a land. All right, so they did mulligan into the Waste Knot. We get to Seek the Beast, though. And uh, exile a few cards. Mostly lands. Uh, well, in that case, let's play an Edgewall Innkeeper. Play a Stomping Rounds Untapped. Play a Questing Druid, draw a card. And <clears throat> do we run out the giant killer to draw a card or save it? Point only has two mana. Yeah, we're going to run it out. I guess giant killer can also actually you just kill a can kill a shield red. That's probably the answer that we didn't find. 
But that is actually a clean answer to Shield or Deter Grid. With our opponent on two lands, though, I don't think it's likely they're going to get to them. Oh, boy. Well, uh... Lucky Clover. Copperline Gorge. Hits you for three. I mean, this is going to be the biggest Seek the Beast yet. We're going to draw six? Opponent, land. Opponent. I mean, Waste Not can dig our opponent out from their mulligan. Path of Peril to blow up our board. Well, we will Seek the Beast. Exile six. Okay, land towards the tower. Not great. Heartflame Duelist. Pathway. Oh my god, the lands. Okay. A few a few lands were drawn. A few wait. Double heart fame duelist. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Wait, 3, 6, 9, 12. Am I mathing this right? 3, 6. Oh my god, the burn plan. The burn plan. I think we got him. Am I am I doing this correctly? Heart flame slash. This is the burn dream. This is the Naya Adventure Burn Dream. Duelist ya. That's nine to the face for three mana. And then uh, Duelist number two. Got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> okay. Yes, that one's going to go face. And that one's going to go face. And, well, I guess that shows the explosive potential of this deck. <laughs> that was like a really, really impressive game. Okay. Okay. Okay, that was that was actually very good. I will say, I will say, you gotta play a basic. You can't you can't not play any basics. Not playing any basics is uh is pretty is pretty questionable, I would say. Uh I think I'm a big believer that you gotta play you gotta play at least one. You can play one. I won't yell at you if you play one, but literally zero. There are things Besage you can well, I guess Besage you you can get a dual land in a lot of cases. But there are things, Field of Ruin, that will that will punish you for not having any basic lands. So you don't gotta play a lot, but my advice would be always play always play at least one. You gotta play at least one. Two is fine as well. You don't need to be excessive. I'm also not a believer in playing like a ton of basics, unless you're if you're two color or monocolor, obviously. But in a three color deck, I also don't want to be playing seven basics or something. That's gonna make your deck worse. But zero basics also uh, also powers your deck down. Well, I gotta say. I gotta say, uh, we're playing some explorer today. We're kind of wrapping things up for the day. But I will say. Today made me come away from the stream feeling actually pretty good about the Explorer format. I came into this, actually, I had a backup deck. I had Historic Bard class because I thought we're going to try to play, uh, we're going to try to play Explorer. Every match is going to be mono green. People are going to get sick of it and then we're going to have to switch. But I will say I came away from this feeling like, all right, that was actually like a pretty nice run of it. Explore. We didn't play Mono Green a ton. We didn't play Rakdos a ton. Grease Fang was actually the deck we played the most. We saw a lot of brews. So what that means is Explore might be back on the menu and Pioneer. We might we might do some more Explore and Pioneering because I actually really enjoyed this. I came away feeling like we saw some really cool decks doing cool things. Uh, it wasn't just the, the couple of decks at the top of the meta on repeat, which has happened before. So this, I think stock is trending up for Explorer for me, because that was actually some, uh, some sweet games. It does, like, at its best, Pioneer slash Explorer, when it's at its best, it does feel like Old Modern. Modern before they added all the, the Horizons cards and so forth. So, uh, so this, uh, the, the decks we played today, Rakdos Beseech... I mean, it's got Grabby Giant, but beyond that, I don't think it's uh, very competitive. It didn't feel very competitive. Nye Adventures, I'm very intrigued by. Maybe you should be playing Pia. This deck is not playing Pia. It's trying to do the burn thing, but the new adventures really do add to the archetype. The Bard class list, I haven't actually played yet. I just, I built it before the stream in case, uh, in case we ended up playing it. But it's essentially just cool Bard class stuff. This one, like... I think is actually... <laughs> I was intending to play it in Historic... But I don't see any reason why we couldn't play this in Pioneer. Now that I'm looking at the list, I'm pretty sure... Oh, I guess we'd have to go the two Minskin Boos. Not that they're actually that necessary anyway. But uh, it's essentially a deck that could go in uh, Pioneer as well. So maybe maybe next stream we do some uh, some Pioneering. What was the record? One and one. One and one with, uh, one and one with uh, Adventures. Two and four, I want to say, with, uh, with the Besieged Krabby Giant deck. Nye Adventures, one and one. 
On that note, everyone, I think that brings us to the end of our stream for tonight. So, reminders! Oh, Halfling would need to go. Yeah, that's true. But Halfling's very easy to replace. Halfling could be nothing. It could be another mana dork, more legends. But, yeah, you're right. That is technically not a explore legal either. Anyway, everyone, I think that brings us to the end of our stream for today. So, reminders on the way out the door. Replay YouTube. That's where you can find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube. Tomorrow got a pretty sweet against odds I think you all are going to like. And one more reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And if you need some magical cards, you can pick them up over at cardkingdom.com slash Goldfish. Most importantly, Thank you to all of you. Y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular. And I love you so very much. I hope you have a great afternoon, a wonderful weekend. I will see you next time. So until then, everyone, be good. I love y'all. And I will talk to you soon.